Hey, April. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Teresa. Teresa, I got a wonderful gift from you that I opened thinking it was something else, but it's amazing. So thank you. <laughs> Hello, sir. You oh, that, that one's mine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bernice. So, how are y'all doing today? It is like tropical weather today. It is so warm outside. And I went and I just laid in the hammock and argued with the chickens and watched the cloudless sky. What are you doing in there? I don't wanna know, Never mind. Um, <laughs> hey, Acid. Hey, Renee. Hey, Sabea. Howdy to you and Randy and all the cradles. It's a beautiful, warm day. Uh-huh. We've had the heater off for most of the day, but, um, like we had the windows open, but the sun's starting to set, it's starting to get chilly again. So we closed up the windows, but the heater still hasn't come back on, which is wonderful. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Hey, Katrina. We have a bunch of stuff to kind of announce and show you guys today, which I'm really excited about. about, about, about. Hey, Sasha. Hey, Janine. Hey, Squirrel. Hey, Dee. So I am going to try to hydrate though, because I'm like, I've had mm, this much water today, so. I only got seven, eight, well, we're missing the other ones. Uh, there's one in the bed somewhere. I think it fell between the bed and the wall. Yeah. I'll get it later. <laughs> Randy's filling up. We use the same like smart water bottles all the time, and we like these bottles because they're really, really durable. Um, but more, most importantly, they fit into our fridge. We can fit like a whole bunch of them since they're tall and skinny. Um, and so we just put like filtered water into them, but I keep losing my bottles all over the house. I see you have been using the new grinder bits. Yes. Okay. So we now have the option on almost all of our cabs. There's some of them that we were like, I don't think we should do that on this one. Uh, so we don't have it as an option on those, but in our shop for most of our cabs, we have the groovy modification um, as an option that you, you can custom order a groove to be ground into the edge of your cab. Um, and I'm going to be doing some experimenting with wire wrapping our groovy cabs today. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Julie. Almost finished with my craft room redo. Oh, that is so exciting. Love the table behind you. Thank you, Chelsea. I like that table as well. I just wish I wish I were a better owner to it. It deserved to be like in an actual dining room, not as a kiln grinder leather table. <laughs> we have put that table through its paces, but. <clears throat> oh no, Drax. She says, so this morning some stray dogs attacked a skunk outside and completely gassed the whole house. Knew you would understand our pain. That is some serious pain. I'm just going to say something that did help us was boiling vinegar uh and then letting the vinegar like uh steam like I kind of like took it through the house like all I needed was Randy behind me banging pots and pans and we would have been like banishing demons or something but like just and letting that vinegar stink get everywhere in the house I had put um dehydrated orange slices and pine needles in mine but you can use just straight vinegar but that vinegar like bound to the um the odor of the skunk those particles and it really wasn't as bad after the hot vinegar skunk butt smell stopped. But that was the only thing I could find that helped. Like Febreze wasn't helping, burning incense and candles, just everything just smelled like skunk butt. But the vinegar really did help us. Uh, and then I washed the bath up with it. So that worked. Um, so excited about the grooved cabs. Me too, Heather. I cannot wait. We're going to be doing some experimenting with them today. So how do you make the groove in the cabs? It is technically not too far off from a Dremel. It's like, if you think about like a palm router, like, or a handheld router in woodworking, the difference between a handheld router and a table router, as far as I understand it, is very similar to the difference between a Dremel and the uh, grinding dock desk that I that I'm using it's right here behind me actually so it has this little like router bit protruding up from the work surface and it's all submerged in the water in the lubrication system and we go through and we just like grind the edge um which is proving to be trickier than I thought it would be but I'm getting the hang of it 
Um, are you adding an upcharge for the extra cold working? Um, yeah, it's like, I don't know, Randy does the pricing because <laughs> I was just going to do it. It's like, yeah, it'll just be the same. And he's like, use how, how many hours today did you spend grinding calves? Um, you need to charge for that. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> And so, but it's a small amount and hopefully uh, it'll be worth it to y'all. But that's why we also have it where if you don't want the groove, you don't have to get the groove. So, hey, Sabrina. <clears throat> Been wire wrapping right on. That stinks, pun intended. Hey, Maria. I'm glad you're able to make it. Yeah, I hate the vinegar smell too, Melissa. But we actually had a, like, I hate the way vinegar smells. We had a skunk spray inside, like we have like a pocket door in this wall and somehow the skunk like got into the house and sprayed in that wall. <sighs> I was just glad the thing hadn't died up in there because it smelled horrible for like a week and a half and uh, and it was like four days into it that um, I was finally desperate enough to try whatever the internet told me to do and the internet was like, yeah, bitch, use vinegar and I was like, well, okay. And really after like half an hour of hot vinegar smell, cause Randy and I were wearing our respirators and, but after about half an hour, that vinegar smell completely dissipated and the skunk smell was not as bad as it had been. So I wish I knew that last night. Someone had a skunk up on the highway. Oof, Kathy. Yep. But I hate the skunk smell more, right? Of uh, any natural remedies for getting rid of the skunks. Um, try to do away with what we did was we tried to get a do away with the stuff that was attracting them so i've started to be much tidier about how i give our compost like our um compostables to the chickens uh, like I, tr I try to make sure to get that buried every night so hopefully it doesn't attract them in um <clears throat> but it's like hot pepper spray like maybe to keep them from nibbling on stuff um mostly is I also let Sam and Z now will walk them around the house so that they can pee everywhere outside the house that way hopefully the skunk will be like there's dogs here maybe I don't want to be here so we haven't had any skunk problems after that but skunks happen nature happens unfortunately fortunately but Rachel says I was going to buy a co2 laser for carving stones now that can be super cool Rachel that really can. I've seen some wicked cool stuff done with lasers on stone. Um, hey, Amanda. And I'm glad Randy talked sense into you. Yeah. <laughs> I rely on Randy heavily for basically everything sensible. <laughs> oh, you know, I probably am on top chat. I'm so sorry if I've been missing y'all comments. They hate mothballs. That's good to know. Diamond bits don't last forever and are expensive to replace. Plus your time and energy. Glad you'll be paid for the extra work. Hopefully. We haven't sold any of them yet. So we'll see how it goes. But I also haven't like properly um, advertised them <laughs> either. So just again continuing the uh, marketing hustle that's eroding away at my soul. Um, I'm finally tight. Had too much in front of me to reach my keyboard. <laughs> hey Penny. Get rid of skunks. Oof. Okay, so I also want to show you guys. Do it, love. No. What adventures? Other than we just started making shorts. Not like little pants. Do what? Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't really want to talk about that right now. It stresses me out. What should I talk about? Just that we're doing it. It stresses me out. We're making shorts. Oh, and also, can I talk about your channel, babe? No. Okay. Well, we're trying to figure out how to make shorts because according to the YouTube algorithm, that's the only way to get like, because y'all, I posted a short today, like, which is like just a less than a minute long video, like TikTok style uh, short videos. And people that have been subscribed to us for years sent me messages and were like oh my god I had no idea that you were still posting content and I'm like yeah <laughs> thanks YouTube so if we see hopefully we don't seem spammy and stuff like I don't want to be like annoying and like posting stuff all the time but at the same time like probably two percent of our subscribers actually know that our videos exist right now so Trying to figure that out, trying to be a good like businessy marketing person. So but um but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't too bad. 
I don't know. I hate TikTok. It's the worst. <laughs> but it's just, it's not TikTok. It's I'm loath to and slow to change. Talk about the Glowforge. It stopped making that horrible noise. Pro, I don't know what we did, but it stopped making that horrible noise. And we have a new SVG file up on our Etsy, but you can get it for less expensive over on our website, and you can get it for least expensive by becoming a, I am trying to hypnotize you by the way, by becoming a $5 Craft Along Club member where you get access to all of our digital download content, including this, as well as all of the other templates and stuff that we've added in the past and anything that we add in the future. Um, so that's pretty cool. Ha! Ah, hey, Randy! Michelle says she watched yours! He says, oh, yeah? Yeah! <laughs> oh, so did Drax! Hey, what's happening? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought I turned all my noises off. Will there be Boxer or Daisy Duke shorts? We'll see, Penny. We want a Randy channel. You're gonna have to talk to Randy about that. Oh, well, hey, Mr. Puppy. Oh, you good boy. Let's figure out. I've never been on TikTok. <coughs> I'm not going to talk about TikTok right now. <laughs> All right, Don Erica. Do you want love? Yeah. Well, I don't want to just complain about boobies the whole time. No, but you should the Oh, yeah, we have a TikTok. It's Back to Earth Creations is our TikTok name. But I guess since I haven't, like, liked anything on TikTok, it, it, it's like, who are you? Here's some people shaking their boobies. And I'm like, that's amazing. But I'm supposed to be at work right now. <laughs> Please put the tits away. And I can't figure out how to make it, like, be, like, not interested in something. And I'm like, please, I don't want to see people farting either. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, ooh, pro says, I, I need SVGs. Ooh, yeah, definitely pro. Hey, totally not a simp. <laughs> it's pretty sus. <laughs> hey, Verdea. <laughs> okay, wasn't well, so she said movies or boobies? Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> oh, Sheltie. Okay, so, um, yeah, we have a TikTok now. We we're posting basically the same videos from our TikTok to our YouTube shorts and to our Instagram reels because I'm lazy and I'm trying to figure out what works and I'm not going to do something different for all three platforms until I figure out what works. So there's that. And so that way, if you guys aren't on TikTok or aren't on Instagram or I know, surely you're on YouTube, you're here, um, you, you don't have to go searching around for our content. Going to try making jewelry. Right on. I'd highly recommend it. It's very addicting and fun and I like it. Going to OnlyFans already? No, we don't have an OnlyFans. Like, we were going to do an OnlyFans where we had, like, cat feet, but then I went over there and that's, it's... I don't think our content fits in well with the vibe that they have going on over there. So I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> SVGs are for my CNC, my 3D printer, my laser, and my vinyl cutter. Yup. I wonder if TikTok shows you stuff like you look at. Mine suggests vids of chubby, hot, empowered women. That'd be cool, Connie. No, it will. It's, I just opened it. Like, I literally, I hadn't looked at anything. So, um... I don't know. Maybe they gazed into my soul and knew. It was like, she's a booby lover and farts. Like, just. <laughs> so I went through and I searched, like, horses and fairy gardens and hoop dancing and some other things. And then I opened up the homepage and it was just more people farting. And I was like, oh, I'll give it a little bit. So I got off TikTok. Brother scan and cut. Use SVGs too. Really? Is that like the cricket scan and cut? <laughs> Connie, finished my flower count and now procrastinating but slowly starting the next. Ooh, right on, Iris. Moving on to the next thing. Um, so this same ow, SVG file, um, I used and made the cover for my book of planning, which I'm really excited about. So I went through, may, I have so many tripods, like, 
I'm just gonna flip this around real quick so y'all can see. We have, count them, one, two, three, four tripod. That tripod's also kind of a towel stand. Also, I think my little tree died. It's losing its leaves because I think the cold weather took out that plant, took out that plant, took out that plant. So, ah, uh, well thanks, Connie. But I wanted to let you guys know we are opening up a couple of custom slots so that y'all can order your on certain items. Huh? On certain items. Custom slots on certain well, items. Well, hey, let me finish. Like, I got this. No. We're saying. custom orders on custom book covers is what we're talking about, Randy. <laughs> like I'm not getting ahead of myself. We've got stuff planned out. That's why Randy's like Cut cameras, don't tell them everything. <laughs> cut the camera, cut the camera. <laughs> but no, right now we just have it up for taking a couple, just a few. Like we do have a cap on how many custom um, binders we're going to take pre-orders for because it's kind of like a deposit. Um, <clears throat> for like you put the deposit down and then we talk to you uh, privately about like what design you want what kind of edge stitching you want like we talk to you about what kind of budget you're looking for and there's a lot of details on our website under the um, if you go to like the menu and then it's like shop and then it's jewelry all and you hover over that a sidebar will pop out and you go all the way down and it's custom so um, you go to custom and that listing is there and it talks about the lifetime warranty and different things and what um, our basic binder entails as well as how we can get a little bit more um, ornate with it but I'm really happy with how this one has come out this is for my classic sized happy planner and we also have we can do all sorts of different selections for um if you want what i've learned is called a trifold with like a tie or if you want a snap or if you want like a button like a sam brown button or something um or like a loop and toggle like we can really make this work for you but mine has the first change I'm going to be making is how the leather stops right here. I should have had it continue that way because that's why we're getting that little bit of warping right there. But this one's mine, so I don't mind that. But the first pocket would go all the way across and have a little bit of a dip in so that I can pull the stickers out. And then the second pocket would just come here and have a little dip in. So we can do lots and lots of pockets if that's something that you're interested in. Our basic will come with just this pocket and a mirrored pocket on this side and it will not have <clears throat> we can do whatever design that you want either laser tooled or, hand, or or laser engraved or hand tooled but it does cost more to get a separate piece of leather hand stitched onto the surface like how this one is so again like um whatever level of intricacy and expense you want to put into it the deposits are starting at 50 but our basic like most basic planner started um the total cost would be 75 but we take typically the the 50 dollar deposit and then you pay the remainder um after the project is completed before we ship it and also that's uh, not including shipping. Now we do ship internationally on these and it would take a medium flat rate. So that's what we would, um, that's what we would be shipping these out in. And we can expensive. do it. It would be expensive. Right, but that it's, we can give them a direct quote. Are you finding out now how much it would be to ship the flat rate? Um, but yeah, medium. medium flat rate box, yeah. Um, yeah, we can do names, we can do Celtic knotwork, we can do, um, like, like really, like, we'll draw up custom designs with you guys, but this is something that we're trying to prototype out a bunch of different styles and see what y'all like. Um, we can do up to, like, a four-inch three-ring binder, like a huge, uh, book cover. We can do small day planners. The most expensive would be $52. The most expensive shipping? Yeah or like if we're shipping it to Canada. Okay. The cheapest box <laughs> to the gotcha. toys. Yeah, so international shipping is pretty steep, but that's kind of just what things are right now. Um ah uh, right on Katrina. Very cool.
that should be discussed if you place an order with Ufa on WhatsApp. Um... Uh, hey, Jots, I, I don't know how to add closed captions on our live streams because they're happening live and I, I don't even know what I want to say next. So, um, yes, we can add straps like all of these modifications that y'all might be interested in. We'll kind of figure it out with you as we go. So, um, hey, Lisa. Any design with them? Yeah, basically pretty much any design within reason. Like, um, if it's, our, our Glowforge can only do so complex of a thing before we have to start doing it in separate layers. Um, so again, I, I can't imagine anything that, like, if you have the artwork for it, like, we will definitely consider it. So this will be on your channel, not a, not a Patreon. I'm not sure what you're asking, Tiddles. Did you open the cover yet? I was out of the room. Yes! Okay. I'll open it again for you. So... How does the binder attach to the cover? The binder just slides in and out of the leather. So... And also, mine has a little pen holder, uh, which are... We can add pen holders... We can add like a band of elastic across here that's connected at multiple points if you want to store multiple pens. So this is kind of how the binder looks without a, uh, a planner in it. So if we were making this for a three ring binder, the sizing would be different, but the back cover would just go in here and then the front cover would go in here. This is very similar in concept to... Um, we had done like a purple Celtic knot with like a scorpion on the front and a name on it uh, years and years and years ago. Very similar in concept to that um, leather cover style, but we're just letting folks know that we're taking custom orders again, which is kind of rare. So, <laughs> cause it's not often that we're like, we have the materials, we have, we're making the time, we'll get this sorted. Let me put all my stuff back away. Thank you for keeping up on questions too, Randy. Mm -hmm. That really helps me. What thickness is the leather? Um, the leather that I'm using is about a three ounce leather. So if you can kind of see, and also part of what we're doing here, like it's like two millimeters around about. Um, Everything that I'm doing and learning while I make custom binders for y'all, we will be including in a tutorial, an in-depth tutorial, that I've already shot the entire tutorial for this binder in particular, covering like the lacing and everything. But um, I'm going to be, whenever we drop that tutorial, I'm going to be simultaneously releasing the... Um, the uh like multiple templates that way y'all can go into our digital download files and snag the template for this one because on the laser cutter it, it showed like the svg shows where to punch the holes everything so it was is very exciting to kind of get that worked out um uh, what is it that this is leather Oh, in colors, um, we're putting together some swatches of all the leather dyes that we currently have in stock, all the paint options that we can do, and again, depending on if you want like 30 different colors on yours, the price is going to reflect that. If you want just one color on yours, you're going to get the cheapest price. So, um... If it's a custom piece, yeah, we sew it. Do what? If it's a custom piece, we do the sewing on it? Um, we have to sew all of them anyways. It just depends on, like, the very basic, the most basic option. And again, that's li this is listed on our website in the product description underneath our custom items. Um, but uh, the most basic one is just, like, a decorative whip stitch around the edge, which is kind of like, see, like, if you can visualize with me, It'd be the individual stitches without that double loose double loop lacing encasing the edge, and um, the more intricate that you want it, again the more. That would be like my wallet, wouldn't it? Your wallet's a single loop. Mm -hmm. 
A whip stitch is where it just goes mm -hmm. around the edge. Uh, we can also do saddle stitching if you don't like the look and feel of the lacing too. <laughs> can you do one for a Dawson's Creek Trapper Keeper altar? We can try. Um, I'm kind of rusty on my soldering of electronics and I can't guarantee the performance pro of your Dawson's Creek Trapper Keeper. <laughs> hey Rhonda. Barbara Streisand, yeah. Um, one with the Mortal Kombat logo. Oh, yeah. Uh, can you do different colors, and can you do a thicker leather on outside? I know you have to use a softer leather on the inside, and that's more costly. Um, <clears throat> we could actually talk to you about what you're looking for as far as, like, if you were to use a much thicker leather than this, whenever you fold it over, you're going to have a hard time kind of keeping it shut. Um, but... If you want it to just be very stiff, we can actually go through and reinforce this with like a thermoplastic, um, like Kyvex or um, thermoplastic to kind, or not the, uh, Terraflex to make it very, very rigid if that's what you're going for. Um, but our current stock, um, I don't know, send us an email and we'll kind of get it figured out if you're looking for something like very, very thick. <clears throat> Droma says you need to sell the kits for a make your own. That's something that's on, on the horizon as well. Um, is it, we wouldn't be able to send out like the dies, but we were thinking we'd have all the leather, um, <clears throat> all the hardware, so like the snaps and all the lacing, like so laces and needles um, for the project. But it, so it would kind of be like the Tandy Leather uh, wallet kits. What is saddle stitching? Saddle stitching is where you have like, oh, I can show you. I actually have a book that has a picture of it right here. Directly on hand, maybe. There it is. It is very, literally on the very bottom of the pile. That's okay. Don't judge me, love. <laughs> oh, yes, that would be super cool. Which. His traffic keeper spells. I actually really want to be making one of these. Do you have your ears, honey? No. I want to make one of these for Randy's D and D books um, for his birthday. I thought that would be really cool. Um, but now that he knows, I wouldn't even want one of those. For what about the little spell books? That's different. That's for the players. Okay. I've got yeah. too much stuff going in the background. Okay. Well. That's what I get for trying to make you something nice. That's right. <laughs> saddle stitching. That'll teach me barely. I don't actually think that'll teach me. I'll never learn. You can't make me. Where the heck is saddle stitching? Oh, there it is. So. Angry Oonga Boonga. <laughs> I can't turn the page, Randy. There we go. Um. Saddle stitching will look, look kind of like that. If you can, if it'll focus. So it's a very sleek, it looks almost like it was done with a sewing machine. Um, I, and it uses like a synthetic sinew as opposed to the wide flat uh, calf lacing. Same. Would you offer suede? Um, one like mine, Sabrina, would probably be... Like a hundred and fifty. Um, we need to sit down and we need to, laugh on it. Yeah, Randy's over here like... <laughs> but, um, I don't know. Mine has a double, double loop stitch all the way around, which is, is really hard on my hands. Um, but I don't know. Like, I was thinking I'd charge a hundred, Randy would have charged two, so fall in the middle like there um but also what I really want to do do you sew it or do you have a machine that does it I hand sew all of it um just because with machine sewing even if it's a really great leather sewing machine you still have your bobbin thread that's just a flat thread all along the bottom and then your top thread that's going through and doing that loopy thingy while it goes through the holes whereas whenever you're hand sewing saddle stitching you have your 
a, a thread in, in needle in each hand and as you come through the bobbin and the top thread actually trade places so it is a far more structurally I feel superior um, stitch to just using a sewing machine and for something like this that I want to last you hopefully for generations of putting it in and out of your back pocket of it getting like rubbed and stuff it keeps the whole thing come from coming undone whereas on like fabric if the bobbins uh, thread gets ripped the whole stinking thing comes out so oh good didn't want to google it right <laughs> It'll take more than a nudge. Could you do design a goddess emblem? Like type I had seen on a purse you did well back was beautiful. Yeah, and we can also within reason I have limitations as an artist. Um, but we can try to, to to design things for you if you have like a specific concept in mind. Like I had really wanted to do our logo. That was like our little tree with like the little how like the door at the bottom and stuff, but um I really liked this design. So Hand stitch are always going to have a demand and price should be higher. People will pay for quality. Right on, Jax. So glad to see you. Thank you for the distraction from my back pain. Oh no, Dana, I hope you're doing all right. Would order a planner cover in a heartbeat if shipping to Canada wasn't so ridiculous. Yeah, I don't even know why it is so expensive. I'm so sorry, you guys, about international shipping. Um, it is, uh, it's hurting all of us. Um, Tara says you need a serger. We, we do have a serger. Um... I need one that can do leather, but I don't know if that exists. But also just the hand stitching and everything. I don't know. I kind of like it. Um, but yeah, so that's, I wanted to tell you guys about that. Um, so yeah, if and, and also what I really wanted to do was like to have a circle cut like in the center of this with like a little bit more stitching around it and have like a dragon eye or like a labradorite or something just something beautiful or like maybe some dichro glass like kind of embedded so we can embed uh cabs and stuff into your cover as well so will you stamp your signature into the inside we'll have it burnt in yeah it's the only reason i won't buy stuff on i can't do the shipping i got you bev <laughs> how much harder would it be to do a mermaid honestly with the laser engraving the hardest part is just just drawing like i'd draw it scan it try to figure out how to digitally trace it in inkscape and cry. then cry a lot and then uh google it <laughs> so it wouldn't be too bad it'd be pretty good <laughs> it's awesome we'll definitely put on my list of goods all right on pro Ooh, peanut butter fudge hey pam <laughs> you do know how to get my attention using a sewing machine on leather will also break lots of needles even using the leather needles my mom does machine embroidery on leather right on yeah even the like really top of the line um leather sewing machines leather is just super hefty y'all <laughs> like um those guys even have a hard time with the veg tanned leather that i use here there was a question about if we would be doing suede or anything like that no we won't be doing anything with suede currently because i have the materials and everything on hand specifically for kind of this style made with the vegetable tanned but with the templates that we'll have up there's no reason why you all can't if you have suede and stuff on hand why you wouldn't be able to make it out of that Ah, uh, hey, Debbie. Well, thank you so much for your support. Hopefully it finds its way safely to you. Human hair works. What? <laughs> I don't know if y'all... Are y'all still talking about the skunks? Like, how to get rid of skunks? Because <laughs> Nancy's just like, human hair works. I think sometimes people will watch and will be, like, super behind for them. Cause skunks? It's... Yeah, we were talking about skunks earlier. Drax and them had a problem with the skunk. Oh, we were talking about ways of goodness, you've been you've been distracted. I was filling all the water bottles. You were. Oh, that's true. What weight is the leather you use? It's like a three ounce pro. Um. Also, I wanted to show you guys this Friday. Ooh, oh goodness, that's heavy. This Friday, we're having a super duper mega stream. I make me nervous too, honey. And. 
wish I could afford one. Can't wait to see what styles you make. Right on. It's, I wish I could afford one too. If I didn't, if I weren't hand making these, I wouldn't have been able to afford one. But that is why we do do the tutorials and show you guys not only how to draft your own templates, but in case you don't want to do that, we sell our templates for like a dollar. So we got you guys covered. Thought squirrel in our attic was bad, but skunk is even worse. Right, Tara. <laughs> Suede can also stretch really easily if I remember correctly. So may not best reflect pro cover stuff more like an outer cover. And it, it can be nice for like um like I'd use suede for like maybe as a liner or possibly um taking something like uh Warbla or Wonderflex or Thermo Terraflex. A, a thermoplastic that has like an adhesive that gets kind of sticky when it's hot and um heat it up, apply the suede to that. And then make the cover, and that way the suede will kind of like interfacing, um, like an, an applied interfacing to keep it from stretching. But next subject, um, we are having a super duper stream this Friday where we are posting up all of these Labradorites. Actually, um, actually, okay, time to do a tripod shuffle. I don't know why I'm like this. <laughs> that y'all can see what we're up to. So this is what I've been up to today. I have gone through our entire collection of Labradorite in channel set, turned all of them into groovy calves. And starting at $10, depending on the size of the cab, um, we will be custom wrapping. We're going to have each of these guys listed up in the custom section on our website where you can pick the cab and pick what wire color. And we are going to be wrapping them um, live Friday evening. So that's what's up in our next stream. Do we have any turquoise? We do have some turquoise available for sale in our shop, but we only had the time to prep up these bad boys. <laughs> um, and also, uh, I'm going to be doing some test wrapping today. As soon as y'all get tired of looking at Labradorites flashing, uh, we're going to go over to the workbench and test wrap some uh turquoise can be a much softer stone and i would hate to put the pressure um on the edges have you showed them what a groovy cab looks like i have not what they look like wrapped yeah. i had some earlier i think i lost them oh here they are so when these are wrapped well Ah, super durable! Okay. When these are wrapped, they look like this. Which I think is the... <laughs> right, Katrina? <laughs> which I think is the absolute pinnacle of beginner-friendly projects. Like, I feel like anybody. If you've got most of your two hands, you can wrap this. And I say that because we've taught classes with folks missing some of their fingers before. And I think y'all can be surprised what you're capable of. Great yep, they did a better job than the cosplayer who wouldn't take off their gloves. So, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, so this is kind of how that looks. And it's just a great way that if the stone is not drilled, but you still want to get that nice, like, wrap on it oh no jennifer i don't mean to be cruel but i'm not gonna stop um <laughs> chat we pick our lab to be wrapped for friday um we will have these uh, probably on friday yeah here i'll be right back for a sec 
Jackpots. I don't know. That's the. It's like they've been just multiplied. They're triples. They're triple pots. <laughs> but uh, I'm really excited to wrap some of these. Mm hmm. Uh, what do you mean you're going to wrap them this Friday? Uh, we're having another one of our super duper mega sales um, this Friday where we stream. Sorry, my stream crashed. So this Friday, what's happening is we are having a uh, live stream starting it from like five to nine, I think. Um, I don't know if I actually posted. Have I even posted February's calendar on the website? A little late now. Oh no, I, I think I did. Um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of miss the auctions yeah, too, but uh, okay. What did I put a time? Okay, well, it's from five to nine, it, it's been determined. <laughs> um, we miss the auctions as well, but uh, we had a pretty high percentage of percentage of people, um, not purchasing their. Mm -hmm. Not claiming their items. Yeah, not claiming their items. Um, and it's a lot less work for, I think, everyone involved to just have the stuff listed up. And, well, I'm going to stress test all of these. It seems super double. Um, ooh, have you ever done that with Ammonites? We have not. We literally started doing this yesterday. Yeah. So. The first one. <laughs> Do what? I said the first one done was yesterday. Yep. And I think we did like seven yesterday. Mm -hmm. and did... Almost a hundred today. Yeah. But yeah, we have almost a hundred labradorites for y'all to choose from. Some of them have more flash than others, and the price will reflect that. Um, and we're gonna we're none of our labs. Okay, this is for real face talk time. Can I tell them about the thing? I just, I gotta cover this here. Um, oh, we're gonna start carrying the stuff on the website. Yeah. Okay, ah, you said I could tell you. Um, <laughs> so, Randy and I have been carrying our handmade fused glass cabs for almost a year now up on our website, and I've really been enjoying making them. I've been enjoying so much seeing what y'all all make with them. Um, y'all. all y'all make with them um and randy and i have been um kind of knocking around an idea and y'all have kind of encouraged us in that by sending us emails whenever it's like where do you get your labs from where do you get your moonstone from how do you pick a seller on ebay and it's just it's really difficult um what product is in the sandwich of Labradorite? Uh, the line around the edge, all of these guys, that line isn't a sandwich. That's just where I went through and ground the cab to groovy wrap them, which I'm going to be demonstrating here shortly. Yeah, this one's going to start. So you should, one of the cabs we did yesterday, you should go right. I've got them all on the desk waiting on me. Um, we've had so many problems with purchasing gemstones from sellers online who photoshop or oil or just flat out lie or um, be misleading about the pictures that they're posting about like size or color saturation and stuff so randy and i are actually going to curate a collection of labradorites and quite potentially other gemstones if this is well received and sell them on our website um that way we take the risk of Will it arrive from, you know, where it's mined from? Will it actually look like how it looks? And that way we can include them in our shop updates. That way y'all can see what you're, what you'd be purchasing is actually going to look like. Um, cause sometimes a lab can be kind of underwhelming and that's okay if that's what you know you're going to be getting right from the get go. But some of these sellers, they'll straight up Photoshop some shit or just lie to you outright about um, what your lab's gonna look like, or it'll be amazingly beautiful from that one very awkward angle that there's no way that you can mount that stone. Um, and so we figured we'll just be the middlemen for y'all. Um, and so, <laughs> and Connie, I hope we never violate that trust. Like I try to do right by you guys all the time. Like I'm, I'm 
too short of a memory first off to be like intentionally misleading because like 30 seconds later I'd be speaking the truth again anyways so um <laughs> do oh really <laughs> insert take my money meme oh my god okay well and we don't know what our pricing will be yet we don't know when we're going to be able to have this uh in stock and i don't know it's just it's very it's something that we've thrown the idea around and we're going to commit on what'd you say it's something that we've thrown the idea around on and we're going to commit on it so what are you doing i don't know you're grooming yeah Careful, you'll find a tater. Do I have a fever? Please touch my face. It's not your face. Mm. Yes. What are you doing? You're so weird. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> my weird. Randy. Also, shameless self, well, not self promotion, shameless friend promotion. If y'all like the comic book themed t shirts that oh, Randy wears, I was like, what are you getting at? <laughs> If y'all use coupon BTEC20, like the number 20, y'all will get 20% off your order with our friends and partner, World of Strange Tees. Or World of Strange. I don't know if this is. Is it just World of Strange or is it World of Strange? Oh, I'm such a bad friend. It's World of Strange. Is it? Yes. They sell t shirts. Yes. It's ah! Profile says t-shirts. World of Strange rocks. Yes, they do. But Randy wears, like, all of his clothes are by World of Strange. Pretty so, much, yeah. pretty much. Okay, so it is time for me to actually get up and use my legs. Hey, baby. Careful, you'll go to the shower room. <laughs> Will you put my chickens to bed? No, I won't. Thank you. Y'all ready to get your craft on? Ah, uh, Penny says I was bummed they don't have long sleeve t-shirts, though. They have a lot of, um... They've been having a heck of a time, what with, you know, the modern age that we're in, in getting uh, their suppliers to actually be in stock for a lot of things. So they don't necessarily have all of the product lines that they would normally carry because it's like impossible to find hoodies here lately from their suppliers. So I'll be right back. Hey, you need all my, I love you. Wait, seriously, do I have to do this? Like a... No, I won't. I went outside. Oh, you did. This I way. sat in the shade. I had my big shade hat on, and I still, son of a bisquick, still got sunburned. Bah. Okay. So, y'all ready to wire wrap? I, it only takes 50 minutes for me to actually get started crafting in my craft along videos. <sighs> if y'all are disappointed in me, join the club. <laughs> Flipping this around. <laughs> Lurking, commencing. Ooh. How do you drill the stone to wrap it? We use a glass grinder with a diamond bit, like router bit, kind of like installed in there, um, which we actually went through, y'all. And I tried doing it a little bit on this is one of the quartz crystal clusters we had mined whenever we went crystal mining last summer no oh, gosh it was two summers ago holy smokes we need to go back um but this like kind of sandstone didn't really hold up that well but it does look like we can grind quartz crystal tara i'm <sighs> i've never been to school for it but i don't know if i personally like the term self-taught because I've learned so much from other artisans, books, um, tutorials, blogs, all sorts of stuff that it's like self-taught implies that you're like, locked, I don't know, in my mind makes me think of like, uh, you know, somebody being like closed up in a bubble and they're not learning from other people. It's like uh, there should be a term, I think, for between somewhere between self-taught and, you know, uh, trained <laughs> at, at an academy um but no it's i i've i stand on the shoulders of every artisan who's ever come before me <clears throat> but uh but nope i i wish i'd been able to take some classes it would have saved me a whole lot of headache <laughs> right on penny van well it's if i were to call myself self-taught i feel like that short changing every person that I've learned from 
you know, but I also don't want to take up, you know, 12 hours of somebody's time listing off all the different people that I've learned from. So, Kelly Jones has some wicked gold tutorials. All right, on. I, I still need to make a necklace for this bad boy. Or maybe just attach it to a chain. I don't know. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I, I went to a uh, YouTube Academy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Though honestly, whenever I started wire wrapping, um, like YouTube, it was a thing, but well, I didn't have the internet in our house and um, it wasn't like, it wasn't like nowadays where it's like, we'll just Google it. We'll just look it up on YouTube. Um, Right sounds. Oh, that'd be so cool. Jean says, who's answering me? Um, that's Randy. <laughs> we had a glitch a while ago that we have not been able to work through where Randy and Daniel both, like, neither of them are moderators anymore. And I've tried adding folks, like, not even just Randy and Daniel, but just anybody to be a moderator. And, like, I mean, we'd talk to the person first, but, um, it's not letting me add moderators to my channel. So Randy's just logged in on um on the computer under my account and yeah, sure, Lydia. I I'm not gonna do that in the live stream right now because it is horrifically loud. No, nah, he hasn't put him to bed yet. They don't go to bed for another like 30 minutes. So but I did go through and drill in a bit on this quartz crystal. Fluorite is actually super easy to drill went through and did that little channel around the edges there. And then here's a bunch of caps we're gonna be wrapping today. So, I'm gonna use this vintage bronze because it's what I have immediately on hand. Let me fiddle about with the tripod a bit. side. There's that. Okay. The tile looks a lot better. Huh? The tile looks a lot better. Oh, like, it's better as the background or just since you cleaned it? Since I cleaned it. Yes, I agree. I, I think it makes a nice background, but it just makes a noise every time it rubs on the table. Okay, getting, getting settled in. Pull my sleeves up. <laughs> but says chickens have a bedtime. Do they get PJs in a story? Don't know why, but the mental image is setting off a giggle fit. Well, if I put them to bed, they, they go to bed typically with the sun. Like the, they'll go up to roost. Um, but I do pat them and kiss them on the tops of their little heads when they go to bed. But I don't. Randy says he doesn't, but <sighs> it's okay. He can just snip them. <laughs> Yeah. He does a head count, make sure there's no like possums or anything. Okay. So with hmm. I'm gonna try. Sorry, I haven't wire wrapped in like two days. So let me shuffle my brain around a little. I'm using the six millimeter mandrel segment of my pliers. And doing one, two, three. Giving that a little bit of a neck. And then we'll pick which side we want to be the front. And I put the bale on the back side. And now from here, we can, I'm just going to wrap this once and twice, and then I'm going to wrap this, because normally if we didn't have that groove, this would just slide right out. But now that it has that groove, 
we can actually secure this quite firmly. so that it is not going to come out. This is 18 gauge, sorry Drex. And also I'm going to see if we can fit a bead on here. But yeah, technically all you need is that one little bit holding on through the groove and then you're good to go. But I am me, gotta prove I'm not a pod person. So I am gonna add a spiral. And that's in Friday's sale. Y'all will be able to pick if you want it all spirally or if you just want it nice and sleek. And no spirally. I'm just going to make a little spiral. Give it a smush so that it's laying correctly. Give it a little bit of a smush some more. Mm -hmm. a, a pod person like the aliens haven't taken me over You can get in here and whoop, open that up just a little bit. I just like doing that because I, I like the way it makes it lay when it's on a chain. Which also this Friday, all of our pendants do come with a complimentary chain. So that is no glue necessary, very little bit of wiggle. And if you want even less wiggle, we can come in here with our pliers and just cinch that down. A little bit tighter now there's no wiggle at all so and that's how I have my top grooved pieces um, okay so you're gonna wrap and take individual orders I just people hope will pay this time um well the way that we have it set up uh, now is unlike with our auctions where people could be like anybody could come in and be like uh, yeah, I want to buy that. And then sometimes we wouldn't hear from, like, usually what would happen, like, if somebody contacted us, they'd pay. Like, they'd end up paying. Like, we'd work out, like, a time frame and stuff. But we had a good, like, at least third of people just never contact us, never buy their order. So, um, it, and but we still had to do the work of boxing it up and listing it. And then what's worse is the person, whoever it was that they maybe have outbid who may have paid for their item now doesn't have the chance um so with our new format it's we don't make the thing until it's actually paid for so it's a much better uh system financially uh for randy and i uh i'm using 18 gauge lydia this is 18 gauge uh para wire And so we can use, I actually really like 16 gauge for this as well, but let me see if I have any on the work surface. Because 18 gauge nestles down into the uh, groove. Like here, I can show you. So you can see that fits in there quite snugly, the 18 gauge does. Hey, Alyssa, we are doing, we are wire wrapping with our new groovy cabs. Ooh, oh, that sounds nice, Droma. <laughs> I was supposed to have made beef stew for dinner, but I haven't gotten any of it started yet. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, if you want, that'd be really nice, baby. Now with the 16 gauge, it still sits in the groove, but it protrudes out. 
So let's try doing a wrap with a 16 gauge. And I'm going to do this with 16 gauge and let's whip out some old 18 gauge half round. This is the titanium toned para wire. Um, yeah, titanium. I really like it. I actually like it better than their silver because this has a little bit more of that look of antique. Um, no, these are glass stones. It's our regular glass cabs, but now all the glass cabs, for the most part, there's some pieces that we didn't think would be suitable for it, but um, we have an option where you can request a groove to be cut into your stone on the website. And we may do some and just post them up as is um, with the groove already cut. So I'm just pressing the groove or the wire into the groove. And now from here, I'm going to take our flat nose pliers. I want to find the center of the stone and move my pliers off to the side just a little bit of it and bring it up. Nice little bend. <laughs> Coming up on the other side, doing a nice little bend. Now, if you're doing it like this, if you do the twist, you don't have to worry about it, like, at all. But if you're doing, like, how I'm doing here to get a different style of bail on this, um, you really want to make certain that... Almost your gap is a little bigger than it needs to be as opposed to risking it being too loose because this is in going to enable us to, um, we can tighten this down. Whereas if it's, too, if the setting's too loose, your stone's going to fall out. So now we have that positioned around like that. Okay. Right on. And I'm going to pull off about 12 inches, uh, let's do 10 inches, of our 18 gauge half round. And I'm going to come around here and start wrapping, but I need to be careful because the wires can be directly side by side up by the top, but here towards the base, they're still a little further apart from each other. I don't know if Kelly's outside or not. I know Ember's in here beating up her new toy. Alrighty, thank you. Yeah, oh, that's a really good tip, Connie. Yeah, if you don't have half round 26 or 28, I've even used 24 before, but it's a little hard on my fingers, uh, works phenomenally for uh, doing this step. Now, one of my wraps is a little loose, so I'm just going to unwrap a bit and then start in again. Okay. And then I'm going to use my pliers. Now, I'm not... Oh, the puppies are laying down, Lydia. I'm not squeezing the pliers or the wire with my pliers as much as I am kind of taking this and encouraging. I'm using the top edge to kind of push everything all at once. And that just cinches it down like. <laughs> ah! Okay. So that is super sturdy on there. I really like that. And so now I'm going to go through and just keep wrapping. No way the mail. Huh? It's way too late in the day for mail, isn't it? Yeah. Plus there's no work in it. Mm. You feel so good. Oh my gosh, thank you for scratching my back. 
How do you have so many tripods? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I can never Why find. I know. <laughs> well, to be fair, I brought two of the ones from in there into here. To be fair. So I haven't actually done a wrap like this with this style of bale yet, but I wanted to get it figured out. Because not everybody likes, you know, this style and I want to have options. <laughs> uh, hey, Elijah, how's it going? What deep machine do you use to do the grooving? Um, I have a grind star. It's a glass grinder, um, but it's... Uh, it has interchangeable bits, and I got a bit from Delphi Glass that it's like fifty dollars for the bit. Um, so, uh, but it has this kind of like how a router with wood can do that, like finished edge, um, and it it gives me that groove. And that way, we can use our wire. Now, I don't think I'd use it with, I don't know, I haven't used it with resin yet. I was worried about it really gunking up the bit. If whenever this bit starts to get old, I may experiment trying it on resin to see. Oh, I'm so glad it arrived safe, Elijah. Oof. And now, I'm going to hold this a little bit below the halfway point And bend down and around. And I'm going to kind of split these guys, one off to each side. Bring it down. Smush, smush. And now what we could do here is a little bit of wrapping or something. <laughs> but I'm just going to wrap around the neck. So you can see this one came around. Now with 16 gauge wire, I feel pretty confident in its ability to kind of stay put. So I'm going to come in here right there. Zip. And it does, this gives a, a very easy way, I feel like. Like to me, the hardest thing with wire wrapping is getting a nice, tidy, sleek look. Um, and I feel like this accomplishes that much more easily than any other method I've found and I feel like much more securely than you know um just using a glue on bale. Straight mud out there. You okay? Yeah. I, I slipped a bunch early. I'm sorry I forgot I should have told you to to tread carefully. And so we could have finished it with a little spiral, but I think I'm gonna try my darndest to be nice and sleek on this one. Do you want to see what I did? What you did? Oh Do you like it? Wow. <laughs> You're making fun of me, aren't you? No. I like it. That's really nice. As easy as that, y'all. And just for, like, I'm trying to break it right now. Aside from bending the bale viciously, this is going to hold up pretty well. Probably say loud noises. Oh, sorry. Yeah, loud noises. <laughs> oh, thanks, Alyssa. <laughs> So this is the style of wrap we're going to be doing. And I really like, too, that a little bit of the wire protrudes. Because I think it gives a really nice finish on the edges. Let us see. Let's do one in 18 gauge wire again. Also, it uses a very little bit of wire. So if you're trying to... Okay, FaceTime again. Let's rewind 12 years to Randy and I, we're very first starting out our business. We needed to make 
as much inventory as possible with as little money as possible which means we did not have a ton of money to put into the materials to make the inventory so that we could make sales because in the whenever you're starting out whenever we were starting out our business we were not getting like paychecks like it was very difficult to um every every little bit of money okay am i still here seems to be every little bit of money um was reinvested back into the business constantly we always needed to expand into more beads or more you know because because we were starting with nothing <laughs> you know like people aren't just like bloop, immediate fully stocked craft room with like everything that they could need mostly at their fingertips or two clicks away on Amazon like shopping was a lot harder back then too I'm just gonna say <laughs> um like thank goodness Fire Mountain Gems was a thing but even they were kind of pricey but like um yeah we needed to make as much inventory with as little kind of front end investment as possible so I feel like pieces like these um I almost want to do a like how we had talked about we're going to be in previous streams we had talked about it we're going to be doing like a $20 Joann's challenge or a $20 Michael's challenge or a $20 Walmart challenge to see if we can go in and how much stuff can we get for $20 for making jewelry and then I'm going to sit down and see if I were producing inventory for my booth so it needs to be holding up to our high standards of quality and durability and kind of like you know looking good um like it needed to fit in stylistically uh I, I kind of want to sit down with one of our like $20 kits and see how many of these cabs I can get wrapped with the wire that comes in that kit or um like to kind of just because mostly for myself I need to check and make sure I'm actually giving you guys a good deal because in my mind I'm like yeah this is a pretty good deal but I also am trying to keep looking at it from the perspective of when Randy and I were first starting out and we did not have money for food and bills would I have thought that this was a good investment and I want that's the test I always want our jewelry and our products to be able to pass is that if I'm trying to start up a business, is this a product that would be worth investing in? Because, um, you know, a lot of y'all are starting your businesses and I don't want to be fleecing you. I want you to be able to use our products and turn around and make a profit so that you can buy more beads <laughs> sort of stuff. So let's go ahead and see exactly how much wire one of these cabs takes. So doing some clever editing. <sighs> oh, right on, Melissa. I hear you, Lydia. That's the struggle for real. Crap, I lost the... What was I going to wrap? <laughs> Not everyone problem with that method of cleaning. Um, okay. Right. Did I cut the wire already? No. Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is eleven inches of wire. Presto, clean up, right? It is. Yeah, I bet if we zoomed in, now it's now it's not messy. It's a tasteful like edge. Like it's my background. <laughs> okay, so. If I were teaching a beginner's wire wrapping class, this is the project that I would be teaching. We just put the wire into the groove and bend it around. And now just like it were a twist tie, we're going to go twist, twist, twist. And that cinches that in and that's gonna hold that for darn near ever now. Uh, bye Sabrina, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Honestly, though, this is, like, super artsy-fartsy. Like, I've got my little, like, half-finished project. Like, I couldn't have planned a better crafting frame <laughs> for, 
I should save this for when we have better daylight and take pictures for on the website because this is this is like my crafter aesthetic. What up? Is actually just clean up my spot. What's up? Is it to keep twisting and then loop it around? It's to just clip and do like curls. Oh. But then they'd have to know how to use jump rings and have chain to attach it to and stuff. Uh-huh. That is a really good idea, but that's not what I'm doing right now. I know. I'm okay. just saying what you could do. The, okay. But yeah, so what Randy's saying is we could snip like here and here and then come it in and have it be like a curly cue. And that would be super cute for using like jump rings or bead links and like attaching um, to a chain or attaching to a chain this way and having it hang. But the way that I like to make our bales that I was going to show you guys is we do our three twists and then we bring it straight up. You can use a knitting needle or a pen or a stick or you know anything like that grip right here no spoilers guys oh. randy and i are not completely caught up on wandavision <laughs> so we could bring this around and twist off to one side yeah actually that's going to be how i do this one because i did not do this correctly well, correctly. There's like a million different uh, ways to do these is the thing. So, and I'm going to continue kind of wrapping around, kind of building over the, the shoulders. If this is the body and that's the head, this is the shoulders. Or this would be the neck. And so it gives almost a little bit of a briolette wrap look. And then I'm going to come in and do just one little curly Q coming down. And I'm going to do one little curly Q coming up. And so that used exactly 11 inches. Oh, that would look super cute, Katrina. I cannot wait to see what y'all do with these cabs. Right on, Julie. And that's how it starts. <laughs> J-Max. Lydia asks, was the glass harder to drill as far as breakage goes compared to a stone? Um, no. In, in my experience so far, stones have a lot more natural, like the glass, since I fuse it myself, I know that it doesn't have any fractures. It's like all nice, one solid homogenous piece of glass. Whereas like a gemstone coming through, especially some of the lab, they might have natural fissures or cracks or cleaves in them um, that if you hit it wrong, whenever you're grinding it, it can chip off. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, use uh, safety glasses and sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling a little bit ragged now here at the end of the day. I've had earmuffs on all day. I've had safety glasses on all day and a respirator for a good portion of the day spraying molds. Um, hey, that. So, uh, and Randy has as well, poor thing. He was out there cleaning molds today. So at least the weather was kind. But yeah, like this is so snug. I cannot even turn. Okay, I got a little wiggle of the stone, but super easy groovy, groovy cabs so it was just wrapping the wire over and over 
yeah, I just wrapped it around the shoulders. Now I'm going to show you guys another way that we could do this. And I'm going to let you guys pick. Well, this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Which cab should we wrap next? One through eight. I'm going to drink some blah, blah. Well, you got to be more specific, Jean. We got three reds out here. One, one through eight. Which one? Five. We got five first. <laughs> I'm going to be ending up wrapping probably all of these today. Pick three, my lord. <laughs> nice, Randy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, five came through first on Mew Mew's request. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Okay, what color should we wrap this in? And also, they'll just get renumbered. And when we get done with this one, I'll ask again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I count wrong the first time? Jiminy Christmas. Thank goodness I make jewelry and not like anything that relies on math. <laughs> Dude, I don't want to hear it. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll do antique bronze again, or the vintage bronze. And I'm going to use another 12 inches this time, just because. But this way, whenever I'm out, you know, shopping, if, you know, I were looking purely from an inventory perspective, it's like, um, this right here is 200 feet. I could make 200 of these style of pendants, so long as they're not too much bigger than an inch in diameter. Like, this guy's going to take a little bit more wire, you know, this guy's going to take a little bit less just because of size, but you could make roughly 200 pendants off of one spool of wire um and that can help you factor up you know the actual cost of you know how much you know is it costing me in wire how much is it costing me in cabs and then you can kind of time yourself because fortunately we don't have to repurchase our tools every time now another way that uh i like to wrap these is we're going to come in about four inches three or four inches Ooh, uh, Andrea, these are our own cabs uh, that we, we make them and then we grind the groove in. I call them groovy cabs because I was thinking channel set, but that's something different, like in metal smithing. That would be if we put stones in there, that would be a channel setting uh, for like rings or something. But it makes me, I don't know. So I just call them groovy cabs. Like 20 gauge work? 20 gauge would work. The only thing is with the 20 gauge, I would be a little bit more worried about um, the the thinner you go with your wire, the um, more snaggy it might be, like the more likely the loop, the spirals would loop on something, like get hooked on something and then pull out. Though that can happen with 18 gauge as well. So just something to be mindful of. Like you could go as low as like 26 gauge. Yeah, I would just wrap it around a bunch. So I've wrapped twice around our mandrel pliers. This is 18 gauge, Jean, that's American wire gauge. It's just 18 gauge from Parawire. Mmm, gotcha. So either around your mandrel or a pen or a knitting needle or just whatever you have on hand, make your two loops. And now again, doing that twist tie thing, I'm gonna go twist and twist. Hey Tracy, how's it going? So I've got two solid twists. I usually try to do three, but um, this should be all right. And now with the long side, Deborah says, so are there groovy cabs for sale now in your shop? Right now, all the cabs that we have in our shop, if you click on them, well, most of them, if the cab's suitable for it, because some of them were like, ah, that doesn't need it. Um, if you click on it and scroll down just a little bit, it'll have a modifier where you can select to have a groove added. Yeah, I think we can do that for you, Katrina. Definitely all the last cabs in the H series. Yeah, all the, now, okay, also it's all the cabs in the H series. We haven't gone through and done it. 
to all of the other calves yet before we put in the work we wanted to see how well received this was so just with our bale sticking out the top I just wrapped um I think this spool of wire I don't know it's the bulk spool from Paralyer I got this like four years ago and I've been oh two or three years ago actually and I've been using it since then so um but I bought like two of them, like I, I stock up when I buy. So I'm just gonna wrap now. So just to loosen it up so that, um, I don't know if I was explaining what I was doing as we were going. I, oh good granny. Well, they're nothing if not durable. <laughs> so I'm gonna nestle our cab in there. And we just wrap the wire around so that it sits in the groove. And I'm just going to bend this wire around the neck of our piece. We haven't put any into our craft boxes yet. We just started making these yesterday. Literally yesterday. Um, you can possibly, hopefully we'll be able to start putting at least one into each box um, in March. But I didn't know how people, how receptive folks would be to this. Uh, because I haven't seen anything like this on the market. Um, and we don't want to be pushing it onto people if they're like, it's tacky and I hate it. Like, you know. <laughs> This is Lisa, it's round wire. I wanna try one next with square wire that's been twisted. I think that would look really cool. So I'm going to wrap this one around, back up the neck. And again, we could make a little curly cue here or we could just wrap it. I'm going to wrap around once and no, that kind of makes it look a little sloppy. I'm trying to go for like as sleek and minimal as possible because that is so unlike me. <laughs> what? No. And then you can always take your pliers, and if something's not going where you want it to, you can just smush the heck out of it and get it to go down into that groove. And now again, we could do a little spiral, or we could snip. Because sometimes people just want something super sleek and minimal. You could do that with sterling, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you could definitely do this with sterling. I could see this going really well with like stainless steel. So that's another super sleek and minimal. It look, kind of looks like a little earth, like a little, maybe an earth like planet from another solar system. You know, where the continents are glittery green. <laughs> so there's. A, hmm? Yeah, the sun is a ring light. <laughs> Okay, um, next one. One through eight. I'm still good at counting. And this next one I'm going to wrap in uh, copper, like bare copper, because that's the closest thing I have on hand. Huh? Ooh, right on. Yep, one from Jean. Oh, right on. Katrina says, would love to eventually know the lifespan on the bit you're using. How many cabs before it's too worn to use? We've gotten about 109 so far uh, off the bit. So that's pretty cool. This was my first one. Yeah, this one Randy did for me. Now, we also found out, because these were actually some dud cabs. Like, this one had a little bit of, like, a pokey bit, and some of them had some surface stuff that was marred up, and that's why we were using them was, you know, if they didn't work out well, well, now we know. Mm-hmm. Do what, babe? If they didn't work out, they were a dead cab anyway. Gotcha. Uh, can you all hear Randy okay? Yeah, I, I'm pretty pleased with it, Katrina. 
Now, with this one, because it was clear capped, it has this little bit of like a... Cool, they can hear you. Okay. It has a little bit of a scuffed... Like, I, I can't really get in there and polish that off. And if we were to fire polish this, it would melt out that groove. Okay. Uh, hey, Mary Hart. How's it going? Uh, we survived the storm. And that's the best I can ask for. Now, before I start cramming wire in here and getting it all twisted, I do want to check and see. 18 gauge fits. I don't know if we can fit it when it's twisted, though. Let's do one without twisting. So, again, just 11 inches. Ouch. 11. Let's do 12. So, live indulgently. Hmm? Mm hmm. Okay. So I'm making sure all my wires are nice and squared up. Now that's what I was afraid of. The 18 gauge square sits a little too hard and it starts flaking off a little bit of glass. That is something you'll want to watch out for. We tr do try to like do it at a little bit of an angle. That way it doesn't stay too sharp. But I don't think the 18 gauge is going to work on this one. Ooh, it does on this one though. Maybe. I'm gonna do rain. No, nope. a little bit flaked off on that one too. Yeah, the 18 gauge is just a little too thick, and with it being square. And that's why we do the experimentation is so that we met we risk messing up our cabs. That way, you know what they can handle, and you don't risk messing up yours. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this in some more of this titanium toned, just cause I like it. And I'm gonna use two feet of wire that wasn't even the FedEx for us guys calm down no never <laughs> so I'm just gonna take this and nestle our 16 gauge wire into the groove and I'm actually gonna try to do a couple of wraps on this one <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me so I have it nestled in all the way around. And now I'm going to grab this. Whoa! Oh, I'm glad that didn't go in my eye. Got a little bit of chipping on that one. Now I don't know if that's going to be... Now, also, I want you guys to know I'm being very rough on our cabs. Because if they can't hold up to me, we don't need to be sending them off to y'all. Now. No, it's not that. I think it's that if we use too thick of a wire and then start putting the torque on it, it's going to start knocking stuff up. Oh, Patricia, I haven't been able to catch lives. Oh, um, Patricia, it's really great to see you. We now stream on Tuesdays from 5 to at least 7 p.m., but we can go significantly later into the evening because we've technically done everything else that we needed to do today. Like, we already got groceries. We already did the post office. We already did the bank. We already uh, did all the stuff we needed to do while the sun was up. So let me grab a thinner gauge. Here we have some 20 gauge. Let's try that. And again, I'm going to use about two feet of it because I want to experiment with something. And I'm going to nestle it into the groove. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thinner seems to be a little bit better than thicker on these guys, actually. It doesn't anger the glass as much. <laughs> right on. So, yeah, it's 6.30 here. So that is Central Standard Time. If you don't know what time that is in your areas, y'all, just give it a Google.
Now also, I think it would be super cute if we had a bunch of these that are like about the same size. If we went through and made a bunch of petals and just made like a big wire wrapped flower, <laughs> that would be so cute. Ooh, oh, Deborah, this would go fantastically with clay. And it would be so easy to be able to do that, like, that indent um, into your clay. It would, like, a Dremel or just a hand file or something even. Yeah, in the battle between metal and glass, metal typically wins. So keep that in mind. And be merciful on your cabs. That would be really cool, Jennifer. Oh, right on, Donna. Okay. Trying to think what kind of bale we should do on this one. Because I'm kind of thinking what with all of this extra wire that we have, we can kind of take Randy's idea but go a little bit further with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, and we could include beads in our little bit of wire vining. And I don't think we can fit another wire over. Okay. And this is something that if like on this piece I have that little bit of kind of scuzzed up bit that I want to hide, I can just swoop. This is, uh, we cover this t technique of spiraling into much further detail in our easy earring, easy wire wrapped earring tutorial that came out not too long ago. Um, and it's just the itsy bitsy spirals all the way up. And now, We can kind of bring that around. We can bring that around. Then we can come here to the back. Now this wouldn't be necessary, but I mean, why not? Now you could do a twist join, or if you had like half round wire or a thinner gauge of wire that you wanted to use, you could use that. Um, we could do some little shoulder wraps, possibly. I don't know. Let's start thinking about what we want. Ah, uh, hey, patio. Yeah, I'm actually going to spiral these guys up the rest of the way. Thump, thump, thump. Just all the way up. And then, again, technically, this is in there. <laughs> so... I'm going to use, again, I, I've really been digging the six millimeter bale size here lately, but you wrap yours the way that you want it wrapped. I'm going to give myself enough space to do a little bit of like cute, fancy stuff. Because right now that would still pull away. Uh, well, thanks for hanging out with us, Alyssa. And so I'm just going to bring this one up. Hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bring this one kind of up and down and do a little bit of twisting. I'm just going to twist that around, bring this to the back, use our round nose pliers <clears throat> to start making a little bit of a spiral, just the beginning of it, and then feed it through. That way it'll hold on to that wire. <clears throat> And now for this wire, we can bring it forward and we can do a little twist if we want. I'm just actually going to bring it around. No, I don't like that. <laughs> bring it around the neck of the piece and then start bending it off the other way. 
and twist it around, going around the neck again. Now this one is what my natural inclination tends to be, which is just messy. <laughs> just a big old mess, but that's fine. And then one more loop twice around the neck coming across and I'm going to finish this guy uh oh my battery is at 15% I always forget to plug it there we go oh thanks Natalie I'm really glad you like it we appreciate you tremendously we appreciate y'all y'all now we're going to come in and just finish that off as a little spiral. So there we are, just a cute little kind of fun freestyle wrap. That you really do get to just focus on whatever you want with the spirals because the, the cab is in there. So I'm very interested actually in doing some pieces where we have something very much like this one suspended inside a woven frame. That way I don't have to worry about the back. <laughs> I'm always covering up the back all crazy like on or like trying a piece like this one here where if I didn't have to worry about keeping the stone from popping out it frees us up so much to be able in fact let's try that on one of the next ones to do sort of this style of a wrap where the stone is already encased or where the stone it has the groove on it because I, i'm ho i hope y'all that this will be a, i feel like it's going to be a game changer for me i hope that it's beneficial or a game changer changer for y'all because I'm really excited about that. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which one should we wrap next? Okay, with half round wire. Um, let's do that in the silver half round. <laughs> right on, Deborah. Oh, Tara, have you been using ParaWire? What gauge are you using? Now, I don't actually, I, I don't recommend using just half round wire to wrap something like this. Now, you might be able to, or at least not 18 gauge half round. It's just a bit flimsy. Hey, Christina, hey, Christina how's it going? Okay, so what's up? Instead of doing the groove around the entire piece, mm -hmm. the frame that you were just holding, mm -hmm. you could just do it on the sides. I had thought of that earlier. Like that's a fantastic idea. I, I was thinking about it earlier, and if we were doing that purely for our own purposes where I'm deciding or you're deciding which way we want to be up, like what we want the sides to be. Yeah. But it, if I were to do that, like if we were to only have little sections of it be grooved, um, maybe on a custom basis, we could do that for folks. That way they can be like, yes, I want these sides to be the sides. Maybe. But I'd hate to limit somebody by my taste when they're like, well, I love it, but I wanted it turned 90 degrees. Yeah. But that is definitely uh, an, a, an, a good idea. Well, hey, RV, how's it going? We do, we do do, we do do some special orders. We, we do accept some custom orders. Uh, right now, we're only taking custom orders on uh, some, like, leather binders. Um, but... We, we announce it kind of as we come through it. Is stainless steel wire hard to work with? It can be. Um, 
stainless steel has a lot more spring back than something like say this 16 gauge copper if i bend it it stays where it's at if this were stainless steel and i had bent it it had gone like bonk, and like come back out a bit um she said doo doo yes i do do <laughs> uh, this one i was gonna electroform but i was actually it'd be really cool to girls and do then i don't know what i've been doo doing <laughs> Um, You're not a girl, I'm a lady. I'm a lady. No, it's a, I was going to electroform this one, but it would look really cool to groove, like, some, some spheres and stuff. Like, I feel like this has opened up a whole new world for Randy and I uh, in what we're doing. What in the good gracious was that? Oh, okay. Okay, so now I get to actually salvage a bit of wire. I need to get my paws on some fresh nylon jaws. I keep breaking all of them. Like, not just the jaws, but like the pliers, too. I got some super big boo-boos that need fixed with my pliers. <laughs> okay, so. I'm going to try to do what we're going to do, number four. Um, let's see if we can wrap this in this style, but like this. I hope I'm icy. Let's find the roundabout middle. Decide which way we want to be up. Yeah, you've only got 15 minutes, okay. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I was thinking we could go a little bit longer today. Is there more stuff we need to do? or? No. Okay. Like, uh, I was going to try to get all these cabs wrapped. All of them? Yeah. I mean, not all of them are going to be super... No, I've been doing so good losing weight, honey. Yeah, order pizza. <laughs> Fuck, this is why I'm fat, you guys. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man, like you're going to be here till 10 o'clock. Do what? It was a half joke being like, you're going to be here till 10 o'clock. Yeah, well, no, it's, we've got, uh, did you put hamburger on today? Yeah. We can just have hamburger helper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So y'all got to see how long my disciplined willpower lasts. About half a second. Um, <laughs> no, Gail, my knees hurt. I'm getting chonky. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Coming in and we're going to do that bend. And we're going to come in and we're going to do that bend. And I'm giving it way more space than what it needs. That way we have room to cinch down. Um, right there, what? Drink some water. Okay. <laughs> He's trying to help me stay on track. Thank you, pro. Oh. Or, I don't know, am I on fire? Like, <laughs> on the inside? <laughs> Water was a good tip. I always forget to hydrate. Okay, so now I'm going to do, what did we do last time? Like 10 inches? Yeah, 10 inches. <laughs> he is. And it, thank you guys. Like, y'all are, y'all are the best. But also pizza doesn't make me I'm hungry. <laughs> so I'm going to come in here. And start getting these wires. What, with other people? Do what? Or maybe go eat pizza at the restaurant. <laughs> you said what with other people? <laughs> now, we braved the world for a late 16 year anniversary yesterday out to our favorite um, sushi place. And it was great. The whole meal came up to like $10 because we had uh, gift cards from Christmas. So it's fantastic. Now this one, I bent the wires a little too far away from each other. If I'm going to be critical. But let's just see how it comes out. What it turns into. Sometimes you never know what's going to happen. Now that would actually be a really cool backing to like mount like another gemstone on or something. Ah, uh, well thanks Melissa.
And I'm going to let these guys come a lot closer together. Yeah, okay. Just getting that wrapped down. The half round wire, while I understand expanding your wire stock sometimes is an investment, like it really feels like for the first couple of years of crafting, it really did feel like we were just buying more craft supplies constantly, like 100% all of the time, more craft supplies. Um, yeah, Ohio is pretty cold. Um, oh, that would be so cool. Hmm. Be really cool. We'll have to figure that out. Take a picture. Oh, I don't. I'm, I missed it. What'd she, what they say? I don't even. Oh, for the back of another stone? Well, like how sometimes people will put like a little, like a little cab and like wrap it. I still, I can't do that. <laughs> like, I have not yet been able to, um, figure out how the heck to do that. I've seen tutorials, I've tried, it's a nightmare. I'm just gonna keep, this is like the wonkiest bail. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, for the first couple of years, it felt like we were constantly expanding our stock. But from a professional point of view, you know, uh, if we, we used to do a lot of events in the Memphis area and we felt like, you know, especially since they were sci-fi and fandom conventions, we were often seeing a lot of the same folks in the Memphis area. So we always felt like we needed to be going back with not just restocked product, but new product. Um, and so that's where we kind of got into this constant expansion and improvement and, you know, always staying on our toes, always needing something new. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and split these. Bonk and bonk. And I'm going to give them a little bit more of an actual bend with my pliers instead of just bonking them out. And I'm going to come about right here. And I'm going to bend this up just a little bit more, and I want to bring those around, and we're going to kind of nestle that in. Actually, what? Let's try this. Okay. Ignore everything I've just done. <laughs> Crap. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if we can swing this. It'd be easier with 18 gauge. I'm not going to lie to you. Moody Moon says, I don't understand why my necklace chains always feel so flimsy. Um, maybe you need to go with a beefier wire, like, or maybe like a, um, a snake chain or something, or try something other than metal. So, yeah, <laughs> trying to. Now this is going to work hard in the heck out of our wire, but hopefully. Also, it's stressing the uh, the glass a little. Again, this would have been better done with 18 gauge. And also for me to have not bent it all funny weird first. <laughs> We're not doing the snitch right now, guys. We'll do that in a future tutorial. Right now, I'm trying real hard, oops, to punch the tripod, um, to do what I said I was going to do. We're going to do these six cabs. I'm going to focus. We're going to do the thing. What is wrong? <laughs> I love Randy so much. Okay, and so now we have fed that through. See, it worked out for the best that it was kind of oddly spaced apart. And now we can splay those off to the side. Mm 
And from here, <laughs> my brain just farted. What am I doing? Yeah. Now, if I were doing something like this for myself, I would go through and just groove on the sides. It'd make my life so much easier. But also we do run into the problem of um, trying to make sure that it won't pop out the top or pop out the bottom, which where wrapping like this really helps. Uh, thanks, Misty. How's it going? You know, it would be super cool. Hush, baby, I can hear you. <laughs> Being snarky. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can hear the mischief. So this is a coiling gizmo, technically. Um, It's basically just a thin, stiff mandrel. I've not made a ring with these cabs. I've made rings before, but not with these cabs. I think it'd be really cool to make a ring with these cabs. I'm just saying. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know why I'm... Now, this is with 20-gauge wire, too. This is going to eat up some wire, y'all. That's all right. I'm just getting it all set up. Okay, I'm going to have to just do and cut it off the spool because I don't want it bunching up on itself. Okay. So now I'm just coming through and wrapping. Oh, you can hear the mess it's making. <laughs> yeah. Here, let's get this out away from the rest of my... Oh, it's plugged in. Crap. <laughs> As I try to rip my phone directly out of the wall. Um, that way my wire can go crazy without tangling up on everything. There we go. You can, you can see it going just bonkers. Also, this is very hard on my hand. So... Do what, love? <laughs> I wish. No, on this one, since I don't have any weight on this side of the piece, I don't have anything to resist against, and it would just be me flopping it around. But I'm just going to come in and use this ring clamp to hold my wire. I said, let me use this ring clamp. There we go. <laughs> Give, it the Give it the clamp to hold my wire. Fix that. Then we're going to take the ring clamp off. And then we're going to come in here. And I'm going to grip it. And I take this. I'm going to cram that up there. There we go. Black. <laughs> Why are you so happy all the time? <laughs> Just all day. Shit. <laughs> it's not like I'm nice to you or anything. <laughs> hey, Wendy. What? I'm hungry. No. What? <laughs> you got six more calves. Mm. We're about to get real grumpy up in here. <laughs> now, Tara, a lot of the things that I'm doing... Um are made easier with tools 
but you don't have to be using the same tools that I am. Like, um, instead of looking at it from the perspective of I can't do it without that tool, maybe ask, how can I do this? How can I do this without that tool? Because that's going to encourage a whole lot more resourcefulness and problem solving where saying, oh, I can't do that. I don't have that tool. Just shuts the whole operation down. Because even with, um, especially with our dragon eyes, we were in a position at the time we did not have the money for more materials, period. Um, and I had seen some really beautiful, like, printed out uh, dragon eyes. Um, and I was like, how can we do that? And there, hence our dragon eyes were born, uh, being made with like spray paint and nail polish and Sharpie markers and acrylic paint pens and just whatever we had on hand to try it out. Well, how can we do that? Well, we have to buy a printer and spend a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. The, the first answer was we'll get a high quality printer and all these things. And it's like, well, I, I can't, I can't do that. What can I do? So I, I, I hope that that mentality might be better service to you. And that speaking from, like, I feel like it's real rich to be able to say like crap like that, sitting here in my craft room full of, you know, all the tools and stuff that I need. But truthfully, I wish we had video from when we were first starting out. We have been where it's just like the money just wasn't there. Then matter how bad we want it, the money wasn't there and we didn't know how, to, like, it's not like we were like, oh, well, we'll just do this and make more money. It's like, no, it's, it, we did not have a lot of options. Okay. Okay, so I wasn't able to fit all the wire on there, but instead of cutting it off, what I'm going to do is we will just pull off what we were using and then slide it on from the other direction. And that will let us double our length, technically. Now be real careful whenever you're clamping, because you could also use two bolts. Like this is like a $6 tool off of Amazon. Uh, is where I bought this one. So of all the things, this doesn't really break the bank. But if you have two blocks of wood and some wing nuts, you could make a little clamp to hold your stuff too. But just don't clamp off the end where the <laughs> mandrel is because it'll just, uh, it'll, it'll just crush it. Yeah. Clamp. Now I'm not as good apparently at coiling in this direction, so here we are. This is also another reason why I don't, I try to not rely on drills for making our coils. It takes longer this way, it's harder on my hands this way, but it gets us where we're going. I have those, remember the video when you did that ring holder? It's a great tool. <laughs> Yes, this is a ring clamp. Yes. Well, now I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven and a half inches of coil. And now from here, we could take a bit more 20 gauge wire. I'm going to do about 12 inches. You know, I'm actually going to do significantly more than that. I'm going to do about 
20 inches because I don't know how much this is going to expand. And I'm going to use the same size mandrel. You could use a different size if you wanted. But I'm just going to come through here. Two, three, four, five wraps. Nice and side by side to each other. I did. I used a seashell as a measuring spoon. I am not a scientist. I'm an, I'm, I'm an alchemist. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> but we've got our five there. And I'm going to take this. Right? Thread it on up in there. And now, holding kind of close towards the end. Because if you don't hold it towards the end, it'll just keep shifting it back. The whole time but I'm gonna, hmm, this is where I'm gonna hold this with our pliers and see even now it's compressing but it will catch dag nubbit I said it'll catch <laughs> but no once you get that first little bit I am gonna squeeze the heck out of this some more Oh, hush puppy. You're all good. And I am just coiling this around. Now this would look super wicked cool if we were able to do this um, with like sterling silver because we could oxidize it and then polish it up. And I'm just going to try to maintain our tension. This is actually coming out way, way too long. Um, for what I was intending, but we'll figure it out. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, no, I've already gone off the rails. No, like way off the rails. So there's that. So what we could do is thread this onto over here and do like a, um... <gasps> it's the perfect length! Wendy, look it. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah he does. I, I live for Randy's validation. <laughs> and it's like, I could show him a pile of like, just dirt. And he'd it'd be like, do you like it? And he'll be like, yeah, baby. I like it. And I'll be like, yeah, it does. <laughs> Not that that happened or anything. <laughs> So now again, we can take this and feed this through just the back. <laughs> and I'm going to do the bend where I want the final bend to be. And now we can take this and pull through. But do you know how hard it is to, like, do this style of pendant if you don't have a groove on there to just, like, magically hold the stone in place? Well, now we do have a groove on there to magically hold the stone in place. And it's a freaking game changer. <laughs> if I do say so myself. It does. It looks like a little... Well, now it's wearing the judge's beard. Now... I want to do this using 24 gauge because I think that would look a lot sleeker. Like this looks like, I'm not going to lie, it looks like, I don't know, pasta or something. Um, like I like it, it has a look to it, but it's not particularly my favorite. But if I only ever made jewelry that were my favorite, I would never grow as an artist. So, when Nanzilla says, beware it may get tangled in your chest hairs. <laughs> That's actually a hidden bonus, ladies. Uh, and gentlemen, is this is a uh, epilator? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that. So I've just wrapped twice around the back here. 
and I'm going to give it a snip with just a couple millimeters past where we need it to be. Bending that forward and then smushing it on down, giving them all a decent smush action. And what are we going to do with that side? We could come through and do, well, I got snagged and it bent, but we could do like a second layer if we wanted. Oh, that would have been cute if we had done like a, a thicker wire in between them. But I think I'm just going to bind this off. I'm just going to bring this around and do like a little spiral in the back. And that actually leaves us enough wire. We could just wrap a whole nother cab. So I'm going to tackle this when I have a little bit more brain juice knocking about in my head. Just I, I'm sorry to have gotten you guys excited about that, but I don't know if I have it in me today. I don't know. We might try it next. We'll see. We got a little spiral on the back. So there's another style that we can do. <laughs> well, yeah, just hidden the back. Yes, we're still waiting for the mold compound to arrive. It was supposed to have gotten here like Sunday or Monday. I don't know. I don't it. But we wait eagerly. Oh, really? Cool. Do what? Gotcha. Definitely before 2030. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Tara, we used a grinding bit um, in our glass star, uh, glass grinder, to grind the uh, edge in there. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think if you used like a diamond disc bit, please, please, please wear eye protection. But uh, you could go through with like a handheld Dremel tool. would be a lot more of an affordable way of getting in there and doing that. But um, it can get kind of tricky. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Time to make that stuff into uh, inventory. Ooh, Michelle said one. We'll wrap that one. And we're just going to do another quick. Give my hands a little bit of a break. So we will do this one in the I'm gonna make one and two. This might be too small, but we'll see. Hmm. What kind of camera are you using? Um the camera that I use to record all of our videos and to do our live streams is a Galaxy Note 9. Ooh, Tim, that's a great idea. It's a phone. <laughs> now, um, I don't have enough wire here to do a ring. We'll do a ring next with one of the other cabs that we have. Okay, so I've bent that off to the side. I'm going to kind of center it up with where I want it to be. Hmm. That would be super cool. Quite possibly. To do some earrings. Okay. I don't really want to pre-order on anything until we actually have it. How do you mean? Like I don't want to take pre-orders and then something happens and we have to yeah I got gotcha. you yeah we typically don't pr take pre-orders um just because we never know how stuff's going to play out and uh we'd rather just make it and then let you pay for it then so I'm going to take this and give it a little bit of a bend just so that it will stay in its groove now this is a little loose yeah See, I didn't do it tight enough, so it just popped right off the back. But what we can do is come in here and open back up the wrapping that we did. 
And I'm going to come in from behind and underneath. And again, that's something that you don't really have to worry about with the thinner gauges. This is just being 16 gauge. It doesn't nestle all the way into the groove. But if we get it in there underneath the other coils that we've done, what kind of sandpaper would you need to smooth metal? I don't know. Um, I've just used regular wet and dry sandpaper. I think any from like the automotive section, uh, that's where we get ours. And I've used that on like Greaser. copper. Huh? Teresa. Yes. Yes, I did, Teresa. Thank you so much. I mentioned a little bit earlier, I don't know if you had heard me, uh, we had opened it thinking it was something else, but um, and it turned out to be the gift from you and it's perfect. I've been using the pens you sent all day. They are just truly, truly perfect. I'm going to give this one a little bit more of a... But Randy and I, it's kind of, it's not a derogatory term, but it sounds a little derogatory, but we have product in our booth that we call filler. Um, and what we mean by that is that it is it kind of like some of them will be charms that we bought that we put like a bale on and we sell them as necklaces or um, something that we like made a ton of because, you know, kind of like these ones that yes, they are handmade and wire wrapped, but a lot it's a lot easier to replicate this than it is to replicate this. So this would have been filler and this is like one of our showcase pieces. But filler is our bread and butter because, you know, uh, there, there would have been a time in our life that we would have sold this at cost. So we would have sold it for like five bucks, um, you know, which barely covers the material. It doesn't even take into account time or tool and machinery replacement or anything like that but we just needed to get product moved so that we could uh you know pay our bills and eat, get food um but also it's super important i feel like like the i'm really glad i had randy right from the beginning because he was like empty shelves don't sell like randy was like he, he's just a natural salesman he's very just it's like he just knows it like i don't know if he read like books or if he just he's he's just been very can't read. i can't read he says he's he's very attentive and he's worked in retail for a long time um like since before he was legally hireable he's worked like you know, stocking shelves and like he's he's a business person he's like empty shelves don't sell the same thing's going to apply to our booth um also, we had been in positions too where we were, uh, where we had worked, He'd come in and done some facing and stuff. And we, we'd had some really good examples of what doesn't work. And then working for like corporate, he had had some really good examples of what it looks like when you have an entire crew of people whose only job is to make sure your sales are high, you know, which is the people who are in like the marketing and, um, I don't know, what's the department, babe, that would like in corporate that would tell people how the shelves need to be set up. Uh, like, I don't know, they handle like layout and what should be next to what so it sells better. Yeah, they give you a printout mm -hmm. saying this is what your shelf needs to look like with these items next to these items. Mm -hmm. But it, his mind was just naturally at, well, let's put like with like. You know, let's have the ear cuffs by the earrings. That way, if people are looking for stuff for on their ears, anyways. Ooh, I gotta go let the cat in. Look at that kitty, y'all. It kind of terrified me. She's jumping up <laughs> out of the darkness. But I'll be right back. I go let the cat in. But we knew the importance of having a full looking booth, uh, even like if it's a three day weekend, we want our booth to look as full tearing down on Sunday as what it did Friday morning when we opened up. Because, you know, people are going to be coming through on Sunday who didn't get to see all of our best pieces that hopefully had already sold on Friday. You know, and we want to make just as good of an impression. We want to have just as good of a selection. And we want to have just as, um, you know, good looking of a booth as possible. And that's something that, 
you know, it, it, we wanted to look nice. We wanted to look professional. We wanted people to take us seriously because as basically giant babies um, out there on the con circuit and stuff, you know, we, and especially if he shaved his beard, Randy looked like a 12 year old that had broken out of middle school. Um, a handsome 12 year old. I know, right? Can we do story time for a minute? My hands need a break. Yeah, my legs are broke from being lazy. Well, otherwise I just have to drag the chair. This is easier. Oh, easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Story time. We were at the Smithle Fiddler's Jamboree. Or Smithville. Smithle is what everybody called it. it. Live there, it's Smithville. Smithville, yeah. Uh, we were at the Smithville Fiddler's Jamboree. 300 freaking degrees outside. It's in like July. It was like 92. Oh, <laughs> and humid. And we were on blacktop, like paved road. Street festival means we're on the street. It wasn't like some green field where there's like shade and plants. No, it's hell. It's a hellscape. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was hot. It wasn't that. It was the same one where you told people they plump when you cook them. No, that was a different event. This is the one where our 10 by 10 came in. Same event, different years. No. Oh. Welcome to Tennessee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, because th this was the year that... The year that you told people they plump when they cook them was the year that it was after At, the July yes. 4th, and so nobody showed up. Yeah, that was the year it was like... A hundred and... Right. Okay. Four. Anyways, we were next to these folks who had, like... They were, like, 90. I don't remember what they sold, but they were old. It was And they wood railed toys. on me the entire weekend. It was wood toys. And also, our, like, demographic averages out at 70, so we can't just be, like, I don't old care. People. They were old. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying this because I had shaved my face, and the whole, whole weekend, they were, like... Did she have to sign you out of school so that you could be here? And I was like, what? I'm older than she is. So you're like, you're going to let that 12-year-old carry your money box? <laughs> like, I don't know if I trust a child with my money box. I, oh, all weekend. <laughs> all weekend. Gene says you have a 90-year-old on here. I know. I know. But no, it's they were... um. We were actually really concerned about them because of the heat. It was really And hot. they were like, we're we dying. Been, like, and, and they left, straight up looked at us and were like, we're old. We can't be doing this. And we were like, you okay, boss? Because we were like 19, no. which 30 is old when you're 19. I'm just going to say. Um, <laughs> we were 23. 23? Yeah. My hair is getting too long. I'm shedding. Oh, boy. But it? yeah, every time one of us would like Sorry. leave the booth to go potty or whatever, we'd check on make sure that they don't need anything like ice water. Yeah, because we had brought like a cooler and stuff. And oh my gosh, Randy, he's a baby. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, it was, oh, all weekend. They were the good old days. And it's it's just they were so relentless. <laughs> well, it it was just so it was the husband. He I'm, was very he was picking on Randy hard. But I also think he was a tad jealous of you being in that booth with all those ladies. Yes, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. No. <laughs> But, um, because we had some friends and helpers there with us that weekend, so it was, like, baby-faced Randy surrounded by a bunch of, like, buxom young women. Um, <laughs> is Randy the babe with the power? Yes! I was just talking to a 90-year-old starting on wire wrapping. Right on! Age is relative to your own. The older you are, the younger it seems. Right? And that's... Seeing and even just like now. twenty year olds now, I'm like, oh, you little baby. And I'm only like thirty something, but it's like you said, you baby. Like, <laughs> so I can't imagine how I'm gonna feel when. And, like, and that's the thing is like, I was so professional. I didn't. Yeah. That was back when he always wore like collared shirts. Like, he was like, I'm at work, I'm going to dress like I'm, he'd wear like khakis and button, like with the, like the polos. They were mm -hmm. full on button ups, but they were like a polo. Like it was like business casual. He always had a belt on. Like, like I he... wasn't acting like a kid at mm -hmm. all. So I was just like, what do you want from me, old man? <laughs> <laughs> 
Once at a country fair, someone asked me to watch their shop while they went to the restroom. They didn't know me. Oh, goodness. Like a nice church boy that's helping Vaughn at fair. Kind of. Like, he I looked guess. kind of like I, I had abducted know. him from, like, the Jehovah's Witnesses or something. <laughs> like, he was just all well-mannered and, like, like always clean-shaven. Because if he had his goatee, he never had any scruff, like, when we were at working. All right. So, whenever I worked third shift, years before that, I, I worked third shift. I didn't give a crap what I looked like. Yeah, I had a, the an afro and, like, just terrible facial hair because it couldn't quite grow it right. But it was bad. <laughs> so it's like, if we're if we're doing our own business, it's, you want to look nice, presentable. You, like, you, look like you're trying. You want to like, look like somebody someone want to buy something from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, especially, this was just when people were first starting to take credit and debit cards at oh, yeah. street fairs. Which we wanted to look respectable and not like we were going to jank your card info because we were using PayPal virtual terminal, which meant we had to like put your card info into our laptop. Looks so With sketchy. That face. With that face. <laughs> no, it, like I would bring the person around and like have them watch me do it. That way they understood completely what was going on. But thank God they came out with Square. Just being able to swipe, so much more professional. But, like, we, we, we really, we wanted people to take us seriously. Because, I mean, nobody took us seriously. They were like, y'all are just kids. Like, they were like, you're just dumb kids. And it's like, well, yeah, but we're also trying to run a business. And now we're, like, actual professionals. And we are, they leave. Like, did y'all see my pants today? I'll have a cramp. <laughs> I'll just move the phone. They're... Put your leg down. No, I want to show them my pants. <laughs> yeah, I put on pants today. That's like top notch. Oh, I have a cramp, but I just kicked the tripod. I really need to get back into yoga. <laughs> About to turn 24. I think I guess I'm the baby here. Oh, Katrina. <laughs> covered for other vendors and others have covered for me when you're stuck by yourself you don't have a choice yeah dude and when you're stuck by yourself that trash can's looking mighty inviting <laughs> oh he's not wrong um but no it's <sighs> what happened to my hair i tried to look well y'all can see how well looking professional it worked for us it didn't stick Malika says at 23, you're not kids anymore. Yeah, but we're both super baby faced. And at that point, we had been doing it for like, we, we had been vending for like four years. We were super baby faced. Like, this is easy now. Oh, I have a hand. <laughs> um, okay. I guess it breaks. Oh, well, thank you. You have pictures, um, possibly up on our Somewhere Facebook. On the internet, yeah. Somewhere on the internet, surely. But also, this is, we didn't have a phone that took pictures. Yeah. That's how long ago this was, you guys. And also, that's how poor we were. Because <laughs> it's like, we can buy an up-to-date phone. We actually still have the Nokia brick. I was going to say it was our Nokia brick. Mm -hmm. We had the one phone between the two of us. It was on like a $30 a month prepaid plan. I played Snake on that thing. You did, like a oh. champion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's when the beard came in. His beard still doesn't fully come in on the cheeks. For his hair, yeah, it was... Mm. I just shave it all You the have time. that one bald spot, like, right there, but I think that's from that scar. Mm-hmm. But other than that, yeah, it does come in. He just, he never lets his beard grow out, because it's so curly. It'll grow out and then go directly back into his skin. Yeah, that sucks. <clears throat> 35 cents a minute, yep. <laughs> Not going to say I have undies older than you. Oh, patio! <laughs> Liddy says, RV lost his wife. Oh, no. No YouTuber now. I said, been watching you, Randy, for five plus years. Understood, but watch with them. So your channel is like home for me. Oh, yeah. Callie's marching, stomping through the what house. Okay. I'm going to go back over and wrap. But, yeah, that was nice town memory. Thank Tell you for letting me know. Tell them all my secrets. Secrets. I don't know. That's you what Stephanie secrets? says. You got to tell me if you got secrets. <laughs> Why are you going to tell everybody? Yeah. That they won't be secrets. I need content. No. <laughs> I need uh, content for my shorts. <laughs> Story time. Oh, which, by the way, we did do a post asking y'all questions about if you had any questions um, for us to answer in our shorts, if y'all are into that. Okay, let's try to do this pendant again.
tripod things break. How's this just pace in the house, baby? What's up? <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh, Stephanie. <laughs> Our hearts are pretty set on Tennessee because that's where Maddie is in like Randy's family. But mostly not. <laughs> okay, so I really I want to try this with much, much smaller wire on the sides. I'm still going to be coiling it around the 20 gauge, but let's try some. Actually, here's an alternative for those of y'all who don't have don't have a mandrel, not a problem. Let us weave. What cab are we wrapping next, y'all? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Two. Melissa says two. You quick on that, Melissa. <laughs> okay, so seven and a half. No, nah, we're going to have to gauge this because I don't really know. I'm going to use the 26 gauge. And I'm going to pull off two arm spans. And while I'm coiling this, we're going to have a little bit of Q&A. Because so it's going to take me a little bit. So I'm going to flip this back around. Um, Drama says, from what I hear, Missouri land is cheaper than Tennessee. Um, in areas, but it's also like four hours away from like anything. Um, and Randy and I would really like to have the prop, our property be someplace that we could like host venues out of. And, um, most of the places in Missouri that we found that have reasonably priced land, um, there's no other hotels in the area. Like it's not like a good area for, for setting up our company. We feel, Kelly, no. End of it. That's true. <laughs> We're looking at, well, we haven't looked in a while because we don't want to torture ourselves because it's still three or five, three to five years off before we can buy any land. Um, so I am just coiling 26 gauge wire around um, a 20 gauge core. How's the roof? Um, <sighs> technically done. They have not come back to do the things that they said they were going to do, like replacing the boards that they ripped down, um, which I know technically aren't part of the roof, but it just seemed to make sense that if you tear something down, you should put at least put the rotten wood back up. And we told the guy, we were like, we understand it's more like we will pay you. It is, we don't have a ladder and we can't get to the second story of our you know house on the outside. So, like, if you go up there and put these boards up so the squirrels can't get in, we'll... Nah, it's not a metal roof. Um, it's, like, a 30-year shingle roof or something. Um, but, I don't know. I'm not particularly pleased with the company, or the guy, the contractor that we talked to. All the workers and everything were great. It was just the contractor seemed to just want to promise everything with and I'm like you just tell me like the truth. Like if that's not something that you can do or that you're willing to do or that you even want to do, like don't tell me that you're gonna do it and then like flake on us. We haven't heard from him in like weeks. Um like to be fair, it has been all sorts of winter weather and all sorts of stuff. So we're like, bah, holidays and everything. But it still leaks when it rains. But that's because the rain comes in sideways and the siding. <laughs> so there's that. Just coiling. Coiling, coiling, coiling. Keep the dead of coiling, coiling. Your picture is frozen. Not sure if it's on my end. Um, stuff seems to be working okay over here. Yeah, we might, Lydia. We're gonna, I mean, we'll figure it out. Ah, uh, night, night, Malika. 
Ooh, right on. Still coiling, trying to coil faster before the cat gets over here. <laughs> yeah, I think the 20 gauge itself was just a little bulky. Coiling, coiling, coiling. Now this is the most wire wrapping Randy's ever done too, is he used to go through and I'd have pre-cut lengths and he would just coil the whole thing um, for me and then I could take it and come in and do other stuff with it. But uh, that's the most I've ever been able to get him to wire wrap. He doesn't really enjoy wire wrapping, but that's all right. Sometimes my wire will get tangled up on the end like this. Just the more troubleshooting you do, the better. So just get it untangled before it becomes a problem. What gauge wire are you wrapping the smaller wire around? I am wrapping around a 20 gauge. You need to let your insurance company know if he isn't following through on his end, they can stop his payments. He's technically, Teresa, done everything that was in the contract, so we can't, it's just he told it, like, we were talking to him and we were like, would we be able to pay extra to get you know, boards up there and like these other things done. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And told us whatever we wanted to hear, but never gave us a quote. And so we're just like, dude, just tell us, no, I'm busy. I'm not going to do that. Like, you know, this, eh. It's like, you already got our money, bro. You don't need to be overly agreeable. Um, like, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you, t if, if you're real with me. Have you ever used a drill for coils? My hubby used to make his own vape coils and it looked so easy. I have, um, mm -hmm. there are very specific instances where that works really well. I have found with such a thin core wire, it does not work really well for me. Um, also, uh, it can cause a little bit more, um, like, back coiling on itself and some different things so it can be um challenging beyond what it needs to be yeah and that's what we're thinking we'll do michelle we're not we're not really in a financial place right now anyways to be getting it taken care of so we've kind of just given up on it it just left a bad taste in our mouths in the process of moving back home to lincoln england so it'll be six hours ahead Ooh, i am whenever i get to where i need to scooch the wire down yeah. Yeah. If I were to drill a bit of wire, I could do like that much, but I really, I think having good technique for hand coiling is the best way to go about it. Um, cause there are a whole lot of instances where like in my video, um, I couldn't have hooked that whole thing up to a drill. That would have been crazy, crazier even than the alternative. Yeah. But again, just because it hasn't worked for me doesn't mean that it won't work for you. So try it out and see. Are you going to put the pendant you made tonight on the website? Uh, we will be putting those up for sale on the website for our super duper uh, sale this Friday. Because we've posted like nothing but cabs all month. So we're going to be putting all the jewelry we've been making up on the website as well. So we haven't even quite done a full arm span yet, and it's already gotten us about that far. Coiling, it can be a little hard on the hands sometimes, but it's very meditative, meditative. <laughs> a day and seven hours ahead of you. Oh, goodness, Margaret. And I put Ashlyn in wrap on a pool cue. I use a lathe. It's the same as coiling, but it will back coil sometimes. It's a real art. I believe it. <laughs> probably I don't know they're starting my hands are starting to hurt more now than what they did like a decade ago <laughs> this sad <laughs> uh night night Debbie what time will you be going live on Friday 5 p.m central standard time 
and be sure to sign up for our newsletter and add back to earth creations at yahoo.com to your uh, address book um that way your spam filters don't eat us uh it's not going to be an auction we're going to actually be wrapping live what people order in the like we'll have listed up on the custom uh, page of our website all the lab cabs that I had showed you guys at the beginning of the stream and you can pick what cab you want and pick what wire color you want and then we'll wrap it for you in the live stream so kind of not quite auctiony vibes but definitely like a high energy like ooh, gotta make stuff um kind of kind of thing so hopefully that'll go really well we're also going to try to do more giveaways during the stream that we haven't quite figured that out. Um, but yeah, just all sorts of stuff. Again, grabbing it and just moving it down. Because I kind of want to make one just like the other one, but with a much thinner. Um, ooh, do you have any purple? Um, maybe. Not in with our labs, but we had a couple of them out here. And do we have any up on the website? Yeah. Because honestly, we could technically do that with some of our cabs too. No, because we'd have to groove them. Right. But we could do a bunch of glass cabs and stuff in different colors and list those up as well. Yeah. We'll see what we have we made. Yeah. Do you want to? If you want to. Okay. Honestly, the glass cabs, are, since they're flat on the back, are going to be way easier than what those labs were. Right, and also if, I, uh, if we're just taking those down, then I don't have to go through and do all the modify them. Yeah, you just change the category. No, I just delete them. Oh, <laughs> well, but if you, um, if you just modified the category, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have to get more pictures. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Save ourselves a bit of work. Um, oof, goodness. Yeah. Uh, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Do you need a pair of wiring board and Amazon and see a credit card you might without in my future? Oh, no, Jax. <laughs> oh, Christina's purple deficient. Right on. We'll see what we can put together. Hmm. Okay, what do we got? Oh, where'd she go? What's she doing? I don't trust her. <laughs> she can attack that toy. Susan, if you're here, Callie and Ember absolutely love the toy that your friend made. Hey, girl, what's up? I haven't seen you all day. What you doing? What you doing, baby? Come here. Come on up. Yeah. Oh, you're such a pretty girl. She's such a good girl, you guys. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, yeah, you go. There we are. Okay. So now, for my next trick, I'm going to wire wrap with a cat in my lap. <laughs> you making... Cat hair's free. Yep, cat hair's free. Can you lay down, please? <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. Tell me all about it, Kevin. Not put your butthole in my face. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to. I can't really see the comments. You gotta give us the butthole to move on. Yeah. <laughs> Callie. 
I love you so much, you gremlin. <laughs> Would you stop? Go ahead. Well, you need your own only fans. <laughs> okay, lay down. Lay down. She never takes this long to sit. Oh, just squeeze you down. Just squeeze you. Okay. I can work like this. Randy, the phone's too far away. I can't read comments. Can you read them to me? What autocorrect do? Yeah, I don't know. She just wants attention. She does. Dude, I get it. It's because she knows I'm busy. <laughs> it's she knows I'm busy. She's just purring at the storm, though. Damn. I gotta be able to read that. What do the comments say? Oh, Kathy, that's so cute. It's kitty craft time. <laughs> oh, well, you're going to get to hang out with her, Christina, when you come visit. Ouch. I hate it when that happens. Did you just notice I'm working in the flyer? <laughs> Sorry, when the boss demands cuddles, you give the boss cuddles. I think you ought to contact HR when the, when the boss demands Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, babe. Randy says when the boss demands cuddles, you contact HR. Um. <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> You're such a ham. Did you know that? Okay, so this is probably enough. <sighs> you make my arms so tired. I'm going to put you down, though. I know that makes you sad. But my butt's falling asleep. Okay, there you go. Good girl. <laughs> okay. Kitty craft time. Over. We have our wire. And cat fur. Give her to Randy. She'll find her. She'll make her way over there. She's indignant. <laughs> so let's get this camera flipped back around so that we can see the next step. <laughs> Callie is quality control. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I bet you, though. That we can fit the rest of this. I'm just going to pull this down. Let me get the cord out of the way. <laughs> I, I'm glad that she doesn't really lay on my work project. Uh, she'll just lay on me. Ember will lay on the work project. One, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know why I'm counting, but we're just going to get a bunch of coiling done real quick to make up for that kitty craft cuddle time. And also I can read comments this way. <laughs> Ember is asleep directly on top of all of my clean shirts that Randy stacked on the bed so nicely for me. You know. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I should have. I, I recognize that, but I didn't have a whole lot of time. Mm-hmm. 
that's uh, the excuse I'm clinging to, so let's not talk too much about it. <laughs> no, I didn't put my pants away. I'm a giant infant, you know this. <laughs> Can't be held responsible for my own chores. I have crafting to do. Well, the purpose of it is all the laundry except for my shirts and pants got put away. Thank you. <clears throat> Kitty cat fur on my clothes. Yeah, but just the top shirt and I'll wear that one tomorrow. So <laughs> it works out. Coiling, 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 coiling. <laughs> I've missed these long streams getting to hang out with y'all. Which, um, we no longer do giveaways in the live streams. We are doing them in our Monday shop updates. So if you guys do want to participate in our giveaways to get a free box of cabs mailed to you wherever you live in the world, even if it's the, even if it's in Canada where it's like $50 to ship, uh, we do ship them out to you. <clears throat> um, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, but yeah, be sure to check out yesterday's shop update and leave a comment. And then also... All right, on. Oh, that's really cool, Lydia. <laughs> yeah, probably, Tara. Ah, <laughs> uh, hey, Margaret. <clears throat> but we also, if you guys enjoy our content and would like to support the channel beyond just liking, sharing, subscribing, and hanging out with us. Um, we do have our craft along club where for as little as a dollar a month or $12 a year, uh, you can participate in our exclusive Saturday streams, see behind the scenes content, uh, have access to our archive of all of the exclusive streams we've ever done. <clears throat> uh, and then also, the more you pledge, the more you get. So um, we have our craft along kit levels as well. What's up, babe? Is she in your chair? No. What'd she do? Oh, did you kick her out of your chair? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, in our kits... <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got like cat hair in my throat now. But in our kits, we send out the same cabs and wire that we make and use in our tutorials. Uh, that way you can truly craft alongside with us. We also, if you're not interested in a subscription or anything like that, we are posting new stuff for sale to our web website every week. And that's back to creations at, uh, com. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so... But thank you guys for coming here and hanging out with us today. We're still going to be crafting for a bit, but I just wanted to say that. Yeah, hairball. <laughs> hey, Galen. We're not making moon cabs right now. We are wrapping our groovy cabs that we've started making. And I'm trying to do something a little bit different on this one. This crap is time consuming. <laughs> so coiling, 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 smush. Coiling, 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 coiling. Ah, you like that, Stephanie? <laughs> right on. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So close to being able to fit it all. Okay. in a bit and smush <clears throat> oh no Elijah oh did you find it I hope it didn't break <clears throat> the craft have boxes for the 16th go out yet um yes <clears throat> We shipped out a whole bunch of kits yesterday. You should be able to check your PayPal. Um, you should have gotten an email with your tracking info. And if not, like sometimes, PayPal, it's doing this thing where it's like, it'll show every 
transaction as completed and shipped. And it's like, no, well, we didn't ship those. So, um, so sometimes uh, things can fall between the cracks or sometimes we just miss something. We are but lowly humans. Um, so if you have any questions or problems or are missing your package or just want an update, you can always email us at factorscreations at yahoo.com and we'll try our best to get you taken care of. So our wire here, because I want like coiling to come down both sides. <clears throat> How are we going to do this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to snip this in the dead center. Just snip. And I'm going to try to push this through. I'm going to sacrifice just a little bit. Oh, sweet Randy, he's in there making dinner. I love that man. There we go. Yeah, also, Randy has a channel called Randy Vaughn. If all y'all want to go and subscribe to him, he might be starting to post more videos soon. But shh, don't say anything in chat. How's it going, baby? Pretty good. I think some of those that we pulled out of the uh, kiln today yeah? would look good. As the dichro ones? Mm -hmm. This would look really good. Which one's your favorite so far? Yeah? Is it just because of the blue? It looks nice. I like things simple. Nice. I'm really excited that we are making these. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can I talk a plan out with you? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to wrap with half round three strands of wire mm -hmm. to do the base. And then the front strand is going to hug on the sides. The second strand, I might only need two uh, strands, but the second strand would split off and is going to have like coiling would you not do the middle strand on the side the front but then we would have one stacked on the front in front of it mm -hmm. and i wouldn't really know what to do with that okay. like i think that would detract away from that nice clean you know hmm. what do you think okay I oh, know, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna do it with three, and we'll see what happens. Thank you for your input. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna be using 18 gauge. Uh, hey, Bella Ann. Okay, I'll show I'll show you what we're doing next, Bev. First, we are going to cut three 12 inch sections of 18 gauge. Um, yes. This one here, this one will be going up on the website. And all of that will be doing a live shop update probably Friday afternoon, like noonish perhaps. Um, but then we go live at five, and that's when we'll start wrapping everybody's custom wrap tabs. 
Right, Elijah? Congrats on finding it. Okay, also because uh, I'm going to use... I really like vintage bronze and titanium together. I just really like that. It, I feel like it makes the silver accents pop. So I'm cutting about six. Tara says, how many different gauges of wire do you have? Um, I like to use five main gauges. Um, 28, 26, 20, 18, and 16. Like, uh, if you go to our website, backtoearthcreations.com, we actually have a curated toolkit, um, and you can click on the wire wrapping toolkit, and it actually takes you on a little bit of a tour of all of our, like, wire that we use. Like, uh, it shows you basically a picture of our grid wall that we keep our wire on. Um, and we, we keep it in one, two, three, four, five colors. And then we also like to have on hand, I'm pretty low on my shaped stock actually, but I really like 18 gauge square and half round. <clears throat> but um, to an absolute beginner, I would recommend like if you're just building up your inventory or if I had to pick um, just one or two wires to like take with me maybe traveling on the road, I would take 18 gauge and 28 gauge. I feel like those are the most versatile sizes for me. But that's also very um, based in my own style. Other folks might prefer um, you know, a 20 gauge and an 18 gauge, or a 20 gauge and 28 gauge. Okay, so I've just wrapped about a finger's width. They're a little over a half an inch. And I'm going to use, yeah, 28 gauge is my personal favorite for weaving. It's not too hard on my fingers, but it's not too delicate. I used to use 24 gauge, but that gave me a heck of a time. <laughs> okay, so we've done like a 50 degree bend, just a V, really. We don't have to get technical with it. M, yes, my love. <laughs> okay, so now we can test with setting our, oh, I didn't even realize this purple one is iridescent. so cool <laughs> okay so <laughs> okay so i've taken the frontmost wire no front on one side middle on the other let's try that again frontmost wire <laughs> and i'm joining this together and We could twist this. In fact, I just might. What do you twist? I really like the tension that twisting this puts on the piece. Okay, and to do this, I'm going to bend all these other pieces towards the back. And I'm going to grab with my pliers that twist that we've done and twist again and that's going to cinch it if i twist it out it's gonna the twist is going to happen towards the direction of least resistance so if i'm twisting with my fingers it's going to be twisting towards here because i have more resistance on this side if i grip with my pliers it's going to twist towards the cab because that has less resistance than the pliers so that's kind of my thought process behind why i'm twist why i'm doing what i'm doing Boom! Right freaking there, you guys. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think it would work really well with the middle wire as well. But I didn't. I don't have a plan for what I would do with that frontmost wire. Whereas right now, 
I'm going to be going through with, like, this can be done infinite ways. Like, I cannot wait to see what you guys do with these cabs. Like, I think it's going to be a, a, a genuine game changer, I hope. I know it is for me going to be a super duper game changer. Okay, so I am whipping back out this, this is probably like a 14 gauge wire. Um, Jamie, we, we just used our glass grinder with a, uh, like a groove router tip. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just smushing down. Because, y'all, you could do this and then just weave and bring it up and do, like, how you would a regular, like, woven frame pendant. Like, oh, my hands are going to be sore. I have so many ideas. Okay, trying real hard to hold on to this. Fortunately, this is a lot easier to bend with being wrapped in the 26 gauge, I think is what we'd wrapped this in. And this would be a great time to use my uh, nylon jaw pliers if I had some. Um, this is where I'd use my nylon jaw pliers. If I had any! <laughs> Sorry, a <laughs> fairly odd parent meme moment. Um, okay, but now once we get enough on there that we can just hold it. I miss that show too. Is it streaming anywhere? We could watch that before bed. Hmm. Yeah. So this is coming out. Same technique. Different wire size. Very different result. <clears throat> And I am just wrapping this around. I like how it spreads just enough that you can see uh, just a peak of the silver. Oops. And you can see how much that's spreading. We'll just keep going. <clears throat> I should have given myself significantly longer core wire to work with, but here we are. Okay, so I'm actually going to, I hate to undo the work, but like I would actually give myself about two to three inches extra of core wire off the end that I'm going to be like off of this end of the project <clears throat> to account for that spread. I'm not going to take that and I'm just going to smush the heck out of it a bunch um there we go so there we are and now i'm gonna take this <clears throat> and slide it down onto our middle wire we could maybe perhaps what would that be like We just used both. Can I fit them? Maybe. But it doesn't want to. Let's cram it in. No, it won't go like that. <laughs> <clears throat> right? Um, a bead might be really cute right there. Just something to kind of bring that in gradually. This is also significantly longer than what I think I really needed. Let's see if maybe we can bend it out that way and just get it to be a little closer. Oh yeah, that looks really cool. Ah, thanks, Kathy. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that side like that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. My poor fingies. <laughs> like, the little grooves and stuff. Oof. 
Oh, I know I was going to try to work through these four, but I think this is going to be my last one of the evening. Um, like my last pendant. There's, my fingers hurt. And Randy's making dinner. And I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. So I don't want to make my loop so small that it won't go on the mandrel, but I am just going to start it off a little bit. And then put it on there. Just so we have enough of something to, like, grip. Oops. So then from here... Yeah, it's not really working, is it? Now, if we wanted to get super technical with this... It's ideal, I feel like, to not goober it up out of being lazy. But if I'd given myself, again, if I'd given, you know, let's try this. Let's say something went horribly, disastrously wrong. And we have to change out our core wire. We did all that weaving, all that coiling, but our let's say our core wire is too stiff or just something's going on. So what I'm gonna do is we will cut off a longer piece. And I'm gonna try Mit Q Mission Impossible music. I don't even know if this is I don't think this is a good idea, you guys. I shouldn't do this. Never mind. <laughs> but in a perfect world, we would use this other end and wrap around because that stabilizes. I look on me. Nothing. I don't know. I'm gonna try to do like a spine transplant. <laughs> it's like it'll be fine. We can just brain in a different body. We can do it. We have the technology. We can make them better, faster, stronger. Yeah, we were too busy worrying if we could that we didn't ask if we should. But if we have it wrapped around here, check this. Boom, so much easier. I say as I bugger it all up. So that's how you're supposed to use these things, but I'm a rebel. Um, and then we can go like this. Look at that. Woo -wee. Adventure. Woo it's giving us a super cute little curly cute little. Oh, it's so neat. Paranormal wire surgery. Bah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so. I'm going to take that off of there. Okay. And a better. A more mindful wrapper would um, have like measured stuff. So you might want to measure stuff if you're doing this. Smush, smush, smush. Goes the wire. Snip, not into your eyeballs. There we go. And then we can just snip that right there. It brings it down. We can take that, give it a smush. Grab and smush some more. There's a heck of a bunch of smushing involved. Now let's take this one off and see. Oh my god, I hope they're the same length. They're not. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Put it back on there and pretend I didn't measure. <laughs> so that's the thing. I'm going to bend this off to the side. Bring that down. You know, holding firmly. I'm going to try to squish it. There we go. Holding firmly. So because this all always has a tendency to want to like spread out. We can bring it around here and 
Let's do like, I don't know, like a loop or something. Just to stabilize it. I don't know if that's how it's going to be forever, but that's how it is for now. And it's towards the back of our initial like antennas. And bring it around. Okay, so now I still have those two wires there to figure out to do something with, if that's what we decide to do. And I feel like we could have just stopped there. Like, uh, we could have just done this with two. One to bind it, one for on the sides. Hmm. Where do we go from here? Oh, I have not even been paying attention to comments, oh, at all. Uh, hey, Susan. She says, you're so right about Parawire. It's so much better than all the others and very forgiving. I truly wouldn't have recommended it to y'all if I didn't swear by it myself. Like, it was a complete and total game changer for us. When, uh, you know, because we don't really work with precious metals at all. And as much as we'd like to, it's just, even now, it's not really in our budget. Um... But, uh, one ring to bind them. <laughs> oh. Give our hands a little bit of a stretch. Because from here, we could do a woven veil. I don't know, its butt looks kind of weird. Like, it's booty. <laughs> I'm gonna just bring this in and, like, kind of smush it a bit. I don't, I don't want any pokey bits. So how do we move forward? Because what's really cool is we don't have to worry about, it. oh, is the cab getting held in? Nope, it's fine. <laughs> oh, it's probably quite out of focus, sorry. Hmm. We could put beads on this, maybe. Okay, so I'm bending this. How did I do that? I'm bending this forward and below where the spirals start. And then bending just kind of burnt and off to the side. I know it's not necessary, but I like the look of it. And then... Bending that around. And then I'm going to do both of these. So that's, again, not necessary, but I like the look of it. So I'm going to bring this one above just a little bit. Or do I want it? Yeah, I want it below. Just bringing that through. Whoops, and around town. There we go. So then this guy, I'm going to cross it over just enough that... He comes down. That one really doesn't want to snug in there, does it? We'll figure it out. Oh, stream dropped, but we're back. Still not perfectly symmetrical. I don't think that's achievable for me at this point in my life. Um, but that's fine. <laughs> So we have kind of hugs it just a little bit. 
And we could do a little spiral right there, and every part of my entire being wants to, so I'm gonna... <laughs> I know I wanted to do something sleek without spirals, but, but y'all, I can't help who I am. Just grabbing and doing a little bit of a spiral. I'm actually going to bring this on towards the front because it, there's like a gap between where this is thick and that is thin that I want filled. And I'm going to use that spiral to fill that gap. I honestly think a gradation of like two, three, and four millimeter beads building up from the tip would have been really, really cool. I don't know what he's making in there, but it smells really good. And I'm going to grip these two together just a little bit more. That way we can wrap them with... Half round is going to be fastest and most merciful on my fingers, but also it's going to tie in the patterning here at the base. Hi, Joe. Thanks for hanging out. How are you able to do those great little spirals? Lots and lots of practice. And honestly, I don't even feel like they came out that great. So um, <laughs> I feel like sometimes y'all can ha maybe have love goggles on a little bit. They're like, wow, Vaughn made it. It's so pretty. And I'm here like, it's absolute garbage. <laughs> like, <laughs> but um, I just hope y'all treat your own work with the same kindness that you show mine. I just know that... um. A lot of us creative folks can be a lot harder on our work, maybe, than what we should be. So I try to remind myself of that and just enjoy it for what it is. But truly, uh, just practice with the spirals. Years and years and years of practice. Mm. <laughs> says gal compared to my janky learning ah uh, kelly no one can wrap your wraps better than you and that's something i have a really hard time with is like i'll get on instagram especially here lately i've just been in a bit of a funk but it's you know i'll be looking at other people's work or other what i perceive as other people's success and you know mastery of their own skills and it's like gosh i wish i could do that or you know just looking at my own stuff and feeling kind of down about it and it's like no one can be a better you than you. No one can be can, can be walking your path better than what you walk your path. So, you know, I've been doing this full time for half of my life at this point. Almost half my I'm I'm bad at math. For almost half my life at this point. So it's um you know, uh, an example, when Randy and I were doing our very first convention, we saw our now friends, Eridani Studios, and we thought that they were our age. It turns out they were like 10 years older than us and have like 10 years more experience than us at the time. Um, and we were like, man, because they had their full booth and everything. And we were like, we want to be like that. Like we want to be, but they're at basically where we, they were at where we are now in their journey as crafters and vendors and professional artisans and artists and everything. So it's, uh, you know, let yourself be where you're at. And what, what's more is enjoy being where you're at because you'll never be this new at what you're doing ever again. A lot of the things that are very challenging to you now will never be that hard for you ever again. You know, or uh, they might be hard, but just in different ways. Like, so, cherish the moment. This 
snipping those off so that they're the same length as each other because I'm going to take this and try to feed it through on either side of right here. Sorry, I realize it's quite dark. It's amazing what the sun does for lighting. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm going to try to take this and encourage it through. You could use like a T-pin or something to make a space. Now, I'm not getting it between the, the cab and the groove set wire. I'm getting it between the groove set wire and this spiral. Who is talking in my front yard? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I don't I'm gonna leave these guys just as closed loops. Because these were the center wires that went around and then nestled around the neck of the piece where the veil joins in with the rest of the party. Excuse me, I don't mean to keep coughing in y'all's ear. Coming in and smush, smush, smush. Actually, that was more bending. Just doing a bend while I'm saying a smush. And now from here, oh, that does look cool. A little wire in between it. Put the little. Sorry, my Okay. Really after the video because I don't know how I got here. You alright, buddy? Oh? Is it pixelated garbage? Are you serious? I absolutely love that sugar buggy. But hey, if that Italian plumber could best a donkey, I mean... What? It could best a donkey. He's a donkey con. <laughs> 16 bit graphics, yeah. Ah, okay. You had completely lost me. I was like, what are you doing? But hey, what do you think of this? What did the Italian do to the donkey? Come validate me, Randy! I mean, I guess technically he was a gorilla. Well, I like it. A gorilla. <laughs> do you still like me? Yes. Okay. You need to eat. I do. What do you think? Mm hmm Really? Mm-hmm. You don't hate it? No. Nope. I kind of hate it. Unfortunately, I grabbed the wrong box of... What'd you grab? Well, it's gonna take 25 minutes to make. Oh, well, which one is it? It's already open. <laughs> well, but what flavor? Uh, I don't know. What does that mean? I don't know what the flavor is. Oh my goodness. So he doesn't even know what he's cooking in there. So this is how it came out. I'm cooking? <laughs> I'm cooking? Oh my gosh. Oops. Okay. I'm so sorry it went all pixelated, y'all. But it's got that little iridescent. I really like that. It's a little bit wonky. This, but with this thinner gauge. That'd be cool. Cheesy Italian shells. Ooh! Oh, that'll be nice, though. And then I'll go perfect with, we'll have some salad with it. I ain't cooking on salad. Oh, you don't gotta cook salad. I'll cook the salad, babe. I'll slap it with some cold water. Be like, boom, salad. <sighs> he just pokes his head out the front door and says, You guys done pooping in the yard? <laughs> now, of course, it's still pixelated or blurry. You got four more tabs. 
I done told them I'm finishing this one. My hands are shot. They're cold. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm falling to pieces. Um, <laughs> oh, Kelly, that sucks. Cook that salad. Some things are better second time round. Right on, Phyllis. Hmm? Right? Sam's his little doggy Dana. It's his bandana. Hey, Sam. Come here and get kisses, buddy. You go. He said, no. I hate kisses. <laughs> Sent an email a picture of the on with anything. But, um, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I've had a phenomenal time. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves as well. Oh, thank you, Kyle, here for a um, mohawk. I think it's kind of long right now for, like, I really want, I really want to do, like, a full mohawk. Tell me what you want. What you really, really want. Like, I think that'd be so cool. But, and then also, I remember that I mean, I probably shouldn't do that. But, I don't know. It just, it feels long like right here. Well, I say, I say. Von Horn Leghorn. Von Horn Leghorn. I'm so tired. I'm going to go to, I'm going to eat dinner. And I'm going to go to bed. Ah, oh, crap. We gotta load the kiln. I'm gonna go load the kiln. <laughs> Love you guys. You guys are the best. And we will see you in Friday's Super Duper Mega Sale. So, yeah, we're gonna be posting all sorts, we're po all this, mm, all this stuff we made today, we we're putting up for sale on Friday. And also, we're gonna have, I think, what is it, 90 Labradorite tabs available for y'all to for choose simple wraps. for simple wraps we will be doing like um like these style of wraps for y'all to choose from so we'll see you guys because also the labradorite um pendants that we're going to be doing on friday start at like 10 bucks so we'll see you guys there but um yeah friday at 5 p.m central standard time and um yeah just have a wonderful rest of your night and we'll see y'all next time till then happy crafting y'all bye <laughs>